what it is. You know, hell, it may only be a dollar or two, and they're not worried yeah. about it. But yeah, I was gonna... for them to put that out there saying, you know, disclaimer, prices will be higher than what they're shown. That's real quick. Kinda... Real quick heads up, guys. I we're, we've already gone live. We've already gone live. We we had the auto start enabled on GunTube. I forgot to disable that or the YouTube side or whatever. So we're already live right now. So guys, oh. you you're getting a rare a rare taste of the uh, the pre chat. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am ripping on Wilson Combat off camera, but you know they really should do their duty and hire an intern and change yeah. the prices of their product. I mean that's terrible that they're not you know right. that they're not doing that. I mean unless they have a company policy that they're shut down right now, there's no reason why you shouldn't get updated prices on a website. So you got to check out. It's like twenty five or thirty bucks higher than what you anticipated. Mm-hmm. I'm not down for that. So. Oh man! So hey, should we go ahead and go live since we're already live? Is that okay? I, I keep forgetting <laughs> with the new features on GunTube that it automatically starts. It did this to us last week too. I forgot to turn off the auto start on YouTube. So you know what? Let's just grip it and rip it, baby. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Caliber Corner, episode number one hundred ninety-six, season four. God, we're getting old here. Today we're talking about aftermarket pistol and revolver sites and options that are out there for you. Oh, man, you got lots and lots of options. There's some pros and cons of staying with your factory sites. There's a lot of great aftermarket companies that are out there. Maybe a few companies to avoid. I don't know. Hey, uh, Jason, if you get a chance, do a little mock checkout and tell us what actually happens when you check out. Tell us what their premium is or what the what the checkout price turns into when you do that. I'm just kind of curious to see what they actually do to you when you go to check out. But uh, anyway, guys, we're going to go and get started here. Let's go ahead and let uh, the panel introduce themselves. People are going to be freaking out and say, well, you started early. Yeah, unfortunately, we did. Technology happens, guys. So uh, single shot, we're going to start off with you. Check in with us. How's life treating you? What's going on, brother? Oh, busy, 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 busy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And finally on the way home from Washington State this time. Cool, man. So uh, covered a lot of ground and uh, had a pretty good run. Uh, for the most part, I've got a heavy load on. I'm going to take this up and uh, drop it in the yard, and I'm going to try to go home for at least a day and a half. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely, man. You need some time for some R&R, a little bit of time at the range, go do some shooting. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> definitely. But, Sweet, uh, man. Well, guys, if you want to work on. Uh, I got check out. Of... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just got a lot of stuff Got a lot of stuff waiting for me there at the house to, to work with for uh, reviews and stuff like that. So going to be busy. If you guys want to check out Single Shot's channel, it's single space shot exclamation point. That's what you search for over on YouTube when you're looking for it, and it'll pop up. I'm sure if Kingpin shows up here later on, he'll put the link to your channel up there like he does for all of us. Awesome. And uh, you can check out some great shooting videos, and you cover all kinds of great topics, man. you got a wonderful channel. You're one of those uh, one of those sleeper YouTube channels that a lot of people don't know about that they need to discover. So, right, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. No problem, man. No problem. Okay. Also joining us, fellow Nebraskan defense dad, defense dad. How's it going this morning? Uh, I just finished breakfast. I'm halfway awake, so we'll see how it goes. Get your coffee on. Finished breakfast five hours ago. You posted a video. Did you get up at two thirty this morning to make that video go live? No, I just, I I, oh. I I uh put it up around midnight last night, but it took a oh. while to upload for whatever reason. Okay, okay. So you did a video on choosing the perfect wallet. You've got a new like front pocket wallet that you're showing off on your channel. Is that right? Yep. Sweet. Just kind of talking about form factors and mm-hmm. what I like, what I don't like. So what's cool about your channel is you don't just cover just you know guns and ammo, firearm chat. You cover a lot of the daily items that a lot of people use. And I think that's really good because you can get some advice on things that, you know, just, you don't normally think about, you know, things like, like a wallet, you know, I've done a wallet review before I've got, I'm still using the same wallet that got sent to me almost three years ago from Popov leather company. And yeah. it's great, man. I love it. I love it. Now that was an endorsement. I mean, they did send it to me to, you know, to, to, to keep and test out. So, but uh, wallets are pretty important because there's so many different styles out there and types and materials and stuff you can spend your money on. And you well, know, it's, some part, are, it's, yeah. it's part of your EDC. So I was kind of mm-hmm. tying it to that. Exactly. So guys, make sure you check out uh, Defense Dad's channel. He's got a lot of great firearms related content on there and just just a good channel in general. Um, you know, it does some wonderful editing in his videos. If you guys want to learn or get some good ideas, definitely do check out his channel. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Thanks, man. No problem. All right. Also joining us, we got Jason Stewart. Jason, how you doing today, man? What's going on? 
All doing good, man. It's glad to see everybody. Thanks for the invite. Uh, just spent the morning uh, undercoat hair brushing my corgi dog. I ended up with a pile of hair bigger than the original dog next to it. <laughs> you have a corgi? Yeah, I've had corgis for about 15, 20 years. I'm, How did I not know that? I'm down to just one at the moment. Okay. The last couple okay. of years I've had to pass on, but uh, uh, very old. I've had corgis forever and... Uh, uh how those dogs don't end up bald i have no idea but uh oh yeah they brush them they got yeah. hair that comes off it's endless i mean yeah i do the undercoat thing too on mine probably every couple weeks and it just throws like a like a bag of cotton candy every time i do it i mean it's unreal i mean they don't it's weird because they don't really seem to like shed around the house at least i don't notice that a whole lot but when you pet them and stuff it's just like damn dude <laughs> yeah they get these big puffs too that once the puffs start Mm -hmm. stick it out on my call them angel puffs and i reach up and pinch one pull them off uh now, once those start getting thick uh, i brush them dog talk for a second here for people that think that corgis are these like fun little toy dogs that you carry around in your purse they're actually herding animals they were brought over by vikings if i'm not mistaken right hmm. uh from from europe i mean that was like the dog that they brought with them so i think corgis like norse for like dwarf dog or something like that the actual word itself it's like welsh or something um they got great personality they're not they're not super aggressive as a hunting dog like a hunting dog it's like a defense dog but they got a real warm personality my little guy still has his herding instincts so he'll round up you know small children and stuff like that when when he's out playing around and stuff like that it's kind of funny watching him there's a lot of little dogs like that that people don't realize like i had a jack russell rat terrier mix and he i had to put him down at 18 but up until he was 17 he was killing stuff out in the backyard and oh yeah like what beagles are used for hunting foxes right in europe well, i mean it's just yeah yeah he shed so much i actually well, I, I vacuumed him <laughs> <laughs> you get like the get like the the floby out no he got kind of used to it you'd brush him you just have the hose next to it oh, yeah, and just, he, would, he would just yeah god my dog would freak out if i did that <laughs> good old george he was a good dog there you go a yeah. dog who likes to be vacuumed. Now that's uh, that's I've that's thought of the vacuum so. before. It'd be much easier. Well, you mm -hmm. had to pet, you had to brush him and pet him while you're doing. But every as that hair came off, it would just suck up because he had short hair and mm -hmm. he shed. He that little dog shed worse than our golden lab did. <laughs> wow. He's so, probably nervous because you're vacuuming him all the time. He kept shedding hair off, thinking he's. <laughs> now nah, he but he got used to it after a couple times. He just kind of laid there. He enjoyed getting petted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quick, one of the good things that I've always enjoyed about a corgi is they're a pack animal. Mm -hmm. And, um, like, you can take two corgis and bring them together that have never met each other before, mm -hmm. and there's no typical dog hassle. They're not sniffing each other, running around, playing for it. They'll sit down next to each other like they grew up together. They're, and, I notice that I, little dogs freak out all the time when yeah. they see him. Like, they just lose their crap. I don't know what it is, but bigger dogs? Are, are fine like he gets along with yeah i'll take him to my family's get-togethers we'll have like four or five dobermans we'll have a black lab we'll have a beagle and charlie and they'll just run around and play and you know like they're just like in the same tribe you know yeah we yeah. have a convention here at our fairgrounds a corgi convention mm -hmm. and you'll go over there and there'll be 100 200 corgis oh my god there's no barking there's no dogs no, messing with no, other dogs. They'll go sit next to 20 other and wait for the little event and, and act like they were raised next to each other. There's they're no very smart dogs. Around. Like they won't, they won't act up more than they think they need to. They're not like outwardly noisy. I mean, some people say, well, I've got a corgi that barks at everything. This guy, he'll deal with car noise outside. He'll deal with trains. Like he'll, he'll kind of gruff a little bit. If somebody comes to the door, like he'll look at me waiting for a reaction. Like, okay, are you expecting this? You know, that kind of thing. But it might also kind of be that, just kind of that that pack kind of herder mentality, you know. So that's interesting. It's interesting. They're great dogs. So Jason, let's talk about you. You got a YouTube channel, don't you? You got some content out there. Yeah, I try to do a live show on Mondays when mm -hmm. uh, when I'm able to. Works pretty hectic for me, but uh, yeah. sometimes I sneak in a Thursday. It's just good to to talk to everybody. We just do a hangout, maybe cover news topics or sometimes just everyday life and being a parent or kids or mm -hmm. guns or anything we just kind of hang out it's Bro not time. really Bro completely time. gun motivated <laughs> that's awesome man cool cool i appreciate you being here thanks for being here and we'll see uh how today's topic goes over so um and so while i'm not sponsored by manscaped or ferrari yet i am sponsored by ss pond in lexington nebraska the next best thing 
And uh, guys, make sure you stop in and check out SS Pond. They're located in Lexington, Nebraska. Stop in there, check out the firearms, look around a little bit, talk to Stan, the owner. Um, and SS Pond will take care of your firearms needs. They're a great channel. Let's give a little shout out real quick to people that are watching on the uh, YouTube side out there. And then I want to talk about the uh, the drawing that I'm doing. And then after that, we will go ahead and just get into today's topic. Uh, we got Kendrick 98 joining in, Patriot in the Dark, Watt 75, Mike, JH586, Warsaw Patriot. Nebraska Gun Freaks in the House, X Adam One, Sandam of Anarchy, Firefighter 09 100, MKJOYNH, Tacos and French Fries is joining us today too. Of course, M Gabriel, probably the first person to check in with us. He says, Get your brew on. You know what, buddy? I got my coffee. I'm drinking coffee hardcore today. And um, so, real quick, I did pin the link to the video on my channel. We're going to be giving away, in conjunction with SS Pond, an Ivor Johnson Zombie Edition 1911 chambered in 45 ACP. If you have no idea what that is, click on the link and you'll find out. And to enter the drawing, just to kind of give you a heads up, all you got to do is suggest either a slogan or a design that I could put on a t-shirt because I want to release a new merch store that's got cool t-shirts on it and fun designs. I'm really jealous of some of those awesome t-shirts that are out there that I see on other gun channels. And I want to kind of participate on that. And so and I've also got a local producer here that can make the shirts for me. So we don't have to go through Spreadshirt or Teespring and they're going to be a lot cheaper. And so that's kind of uh, something that I want to do. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get make sure you guys check out that video. <coughs> and the information there is right there for you on how to enter. It's really not that big of a deal. You don't have to go do a bunch of entering on a bunch of other websites. I mean, I don't even ask you to be a subscriber. It'd be cool if you were. But if you're not, I mean, I'm not going to force it on you. So uh, let's see what we have here. So Sam of Anarchy's already got a question for me. He says, is that an American flag plaque, just a plaque, or did you get all the fancy and build one with a hidden compartment to hide some guns and valuables? No, this American flag plaque was built by the woodworking class at the previous, previous high school that I taught at three years ago. And I was there for about 20 years. And every year their shop class would do cool projects and they would sell them to raise money for the department, for, for, the, for, the, for the class, like the, the woodworking class. And uh, this is one of the years, probably they did the blowtorch thing. They made these and they were like 20 bucks. And so, yeah, I did pick it up. It is solid wood. It is basically stuck to the wall, but it doesn't have a cool compartment in it. So I don't need the compartment. I got this right here. There's no reason for a secret compartment when I got the little, I got the little pew pew sitting behind me. So uh, let's see. We had some comments coming in here. <clears throat> Nebraska Gun Freak said, Travis, I'm going to try to send you a few ideas for the drawing this week. My wife recently started a small business and makes custom shirts. Well, Nebraska Gun Freak, I might just be talking to you. So there you go. I've got another company I'm working with locally. I'm not even working with them. They're just there on standby to make sure it's if I want them, but I haven't done any, anything at all, any formal agreements or any, any orders or anything like that. So yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, let's go ahead and just get into today's topic. Um, this is something I don't think we've ever discussed on Caliber Corner. We've talked about like RMRs. We've talked about accessories for pistols. We've talked about optics. We've talked about red dots for pistols and rifles. Aftermarket sites for handguns, um, they can be very uh, hit or miss Tuesday nights at nine o'clock. When you go buy them, you don't know if you're going to like them or not. And it can be a, a good experience or a bad experience because you may have to do some gunsmithing. You can really jack your, your firearm up when you do that. Stock sites in general, let's just comment on stock sites. Are you guys happy? And here's the thing with stock sites. Some guns can have everything from a polymer three dot to like a like an actual Novak or like an excess big dot that comes from the factory. Um, what are your experiences with 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 factory sites or have you just automatically swapped them out? Defense Dad, I want to start with you on this one. What do you think? Uh, it depends on the manufacturer. Um, and within the manufacturer, it can depend on what I mean by that is. So it's no secret. I like my Walters and HKs. Those I generally have not had to switch sights on, although I do have a PPQ 45 and it's got sights that on it are darn near identical to the sights that are on my Taurus G3C. And I hate those sights. They're okay. just a small, I mean, they're just a small painted white dot. Um, any Taurus I get, I don't, I usually end up replacing at least the front sight with a fiber optic. Okay. Uh, and I need to look at something for that for that PPQ because it just doesn't work with my eyesight. My other PPQs and my Walters come with those high vis, big front dot. Some have depends on how old they are. Some have the big front dot, and some have the you know, blacked out rear dot. But there, I haven't had to replace any of those. Um, and then I've had like my first gun, my Ruger SR9. I put 
some night sights on it. I really wasn't too impressed with those because a lot of a lot of the night sights, even though it glows, a lot of them don't have like a bigger ring around them. So it's a tiny dot, and I need a bigger dot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna look at some of the different options from different some of the different companies and. You know, you put those, you put those, yeah, if they don't have any kind of rings around the night side dot itself, what you're actually getting is a smaller, dimmer daytime side experience. At yeah, nighttime, it, you've got that, you've got that low level, that low level, you know, site illumination, which is wonderful. But I, what you're seeing now for more and more companies is like either a fiber optic insert where the rings will light up even in low light situations or, you know, bright situations, or yeah, they've got a white. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I think people love the, the idea of night sites and I do too. However... Yeah. And you got to be able to see during the daytime, most of the time mm -hmm. and at night, to be honest with you, that if, if it's, you're still going to need a flashlight to see what you're shooting at. So that mm -hmm. night sight helps, but yeah, it's, you gotta, there's a lot of, in my opinion, bad, my, I shouldn't say bad, but bad for my eyesight brands yeah. of sites out there. So Kendrick 98 says SIG wins the stock site war. So like if you get a P365, what, what I have, mine has like the version three sites or whatever, you get the three dot sites. And then they've got the little green ring on the end for the front blade sight. I should call it, you could call it that. And it's got like, I think a green insert, or I think they might've come orange at one time or green. And they've got the, uh, the little fiber plastic lights up. So you actually have a nice, you know, definitive, you know, focus area for the front of your pistol in the daytime. But then you also have that night sight coverage and defense dad, you too might be having that experience here pretty soon. Well, and my P938 has that too. They're just okay. older. So yeah, okay. they, they do a really good job. Okay. I think SIG calls them what their X-ray sites. Yeah, like X-ray sites three, I think is what they're up to on the P365s, or maybe that's just what they called it by the time the P365 was released. And I'm just picking on that one because it comes from the factory with night sites, and they have for a very long time. I think every SIG I've ever purchased has come with night sites, other than yeah. like a P320. So <clears throat> cool, um, Jason. What about you? What's what's your experience with with stock sites? Do you just despise them out of the box? You automatically upgrade them to something else do you have a go-to or do you kind of play with the gun for a little while before you decide to upgrade them uh, a little bit of all that uh first off just with my particular vision uh and it's gotten worse over the years oh, yeah. i struggle with three dot white sites um mm. I, I not that that my my accuracy or i'm not hitting my target uh but i struggle with those sites it's it Three dot sights, especially with no glasses. I do a lot of my shooting without glasses because oh, what okay. if your glasses get knocked off of you in a okay. fight or something? Right? <laughs> I need to try uh, shooting. That might need to be a video. I need to do like, shooting so, without uh, my glasses at the range. Yeah, yeah. So white dots with no glasses is just a blur. Instead of three dots, I got one giant white blur. So they're they're really ineffective. Uh, I do have certain pistols that I leave the white dots on it just so I can use and shoot those, you know what I mean? Just so I'm not mm -hmm. completely getting away, but I generally go with a black rear sight and oh, yeah. I like to color my front sights. Uh, um, most of my stuff has the bright orange, uh, but I do have a few green. I like green. I'm not sure if I like it a little extra just because it's a new experience to me mm -hmm. or if it's any more effective uh, because if you use some good paint for your sights and you get a good <clears throat> green or a good orange, it's bright. Oh yeah. It's as bright yeah. as a fiber yeah. optic. But the, what I think is my biggest benefit over it, not only is it super cost effective, mm -hmm. but oh, the yeah. paint shows up indoors. Even, you know, go down, even if it's a daylight, go down your dark hallway and check it out. That paint shows up a really good indoors when there's low light. As to where, you know, your fiber optic almost can become useless. Real but quick, can you show us those paint markers that you had earlier? You had, uh, you had, the, you can just turn your, can you turn your camera on and show off those paint? Yeah, so you've got the, who makes those? That's, uh, what's that company called again? This is the Birchwood Casey yeah. one. Yeah, Birchwood um, Casey. Okay. I just came across these lately, um, and these are my new favorites. Uh, uh, that orange or red? This is the orange. It's like a tangerine orange. Okay. 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 Oh, I done something here. Sorry. No, it's okay. We can see fine. Oh. Uh oh. Yeah, I was gonna say it did freeze up when you were showing off the package. So you got the uh, the Birchwood Casey's. Oh, he might have disconnected himself accidentally. I will right, we'll see if Jason can come back. But he makes a good point. The paint markers are a nice, you know, resolution 
to having like a blacked out front side or maybe a stainless front side that just blends in with the rear and you can't distinguish the rear from the front easily on the firing line. Now, with practice, don't get me wrong, you can you get used to shooting anything. You know, you've got you know, it's not a problem, but like take my, my little Makarov pistol where you've got this tiny little like one eighth or quarter inch black blade on the front and you can hardly even make it out on a target. I mean, it's terrible. So anything you can do to make that stand out, I think is, is important. Yeah, I've got one of my guns that have the blacked out just factory sights. Mm -hmm. I, my daughter got this neon, various neon color uh, fingernail polish kit and she didn't like the orange. And so I oh. used that for my front sights. Cause you could, I mean, yeah. it's, it's neon orange and you, you can, I did that on my revolver, <laughs> did that on my Ruger Mark one. Mm -hmm. it, it makes a huge difference. Oh yeah. Um, single shot. What about you? What do you do for aftermarket sites? Are you a night sight guy? Are you a fiber optic sight guy? Are you a fiber optic night sight combo kind of guy, which we're going to look at here in a little bit. What are you, man? Uh, probably right in the same boat as defense dad and uh, jason i uh i prefer the fiber optics now but when i was shooting competition we had to use all standard uh, rack grade sights okay so you had to kind of work with that and along with the uh, slide on the 45 we'd uh carbon it up so that it kicked out the glare Oh, he was able okay. to pick up those uh, sights yeah. a little bit better because they were more pronounced with the uh, carbon smoke. So that helped out considerably. But uh, nowadays, <laughs> if I uh, if I can do it, a lot of my uh, single shot barrels have uh, scopes or fiber optics on them. Yeah. Now, uh, I've been finding myself I kind of switching go. over to nicer optics as I get older. It's like, okay, I don't enjoy using this. <laughs> this iron oh, sight yeah. oh, board. Yeah. if i want to hunt with it i definitely want to make sure i can see so yeah yeah, yeah. if i shoot left eyed i could see the sights you know common iron sights with mm -hmm. uh, not too much trouble mm -hmm. but uh right eye uh forget it i've got to have uh optics okay i have a birchwood casey product that squib load actually sent me it's a spray that you can spray on the top of your firearm you can tape off anything you don't want to get sprayed you spray it and it's like a glare reducer for the top of your gun. So if you're competing with a stainless firearm, instead of having that glare, especially if it doesn't have any kind of texturing on the top to, to kind of stop that glare. It's kind of like when we played football in high school, you put the paint on under your eyes to cover the glare coming off your cheeks. It was kind of the same idea on the top of your gun, and it, it adds a little contrast to the top of your gun. You got that black stripe going down the middle. So if you have, you know, steel sights or just all black sights, it kind of helps uh, kind of cut out that glare so you can see them a little bit better. So that's like a nice little budget option too. So um, we've got all kinds of comments coming in here. So let's take a look and see what we got here. YNH says, I like the aluminum black markers from Birchwood Casey. I'm pretty happy with Birchwood Casey. Okay, guys, are you back? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I was, I was trying to figure out if it was me or not. No, it says... Yeah, I really. We will continue this. No, it says no data. We'll see what happens here, guys. Yeah, I'm oh. looking on the YouTube stream, and I just see your logo. Okay, are we back? We may have to... Oh, have there, I, there I see you on there. There we go. Yeah, guys, we just got shut down for some reason. I don't know what happened. It just said, um, it, I've got a 500 megabit um, connection here that's fiber, so we should be okay. So sorry about that, guys. We're back. Looks like we're back. If this happens again, if we get shut down again, then we'll just switch over to StreamYard, and I'll make a part two, and we'll just continue where we left off. So I'm probably not the... Yeah, Defense Dad, it says that you're the moderator. So Defense Dad, why don't you go ahead and drop out and single shot drop out and come right back. And then that'll make me the moderator so I can control the whole stream. You guys want right. to go ahead and do that for me? Yeah. All right, so now it's just me, guys. It's just me. Um, so Sam of Anarchy, you say, do you, Defense Dad, Jason, and single shot have any little red dot sights on your handguns? Uh, that was actually a question I was just hoping to get to here in a second. So when it comes to... Um, 
Red dots, I, I don't have any on my firearms. I've tested quite a few on the channel, um, different various red dots on ARs, uh, not so much on shotguns, but on pistols. I've done that before. Um, Defense Dad, do you have a red dot on any of your handguns yet? I can't remember. Not like yet. I'm, I'm looking at a couple. Uh, in fact, I shot one on the 365XL last night. It was just the Sig Romeo. I actually could see the dot, but I, I still didn't. I don't shoot very well with them yet. Okay. Yeah, they take a lot of practice. I guess that's why I haven't upgraded yet because I don't feel like having to go to the range and relearn over again how to shoot well with like a red dot. I'm just happy with my iron sights and a flashlight, either attached or separate. Um, single shot, what about you? Do you have any any red dots attached to your firearm at all? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> all kinds of red dots. Red dots and uh, fiber optic sights. I had a set of fire sights, which was straight red. Uh, okay. Fiber optics on my pair of ordnance 45, and I'm gonna have another set. Got hot in that safe. It melted the the uh, light bars. Oh <laughs> man. So okay. I'm gonna put a new set of the uh, fire sights on that, and if I can get them for a couple of the other uh, semi-autos, then uh, I'm gonna do that as well. Because, okay. like I said, I do like those fire sights. They're very easy to pick up and take. Very, very little light to set them things off, and uh, uh, I uh, I prefer uh, that type of sight anyway. Okay, okay. Uh, because of what I mentioned earlier, but uh, yeah, they're uh, they're good sights, and uh, uh, one that I'm testing right now, I've got two of them. I've got okay. the uh, True Glow. Mm -hmm. And I've got one mounted on the 6.5 JDJ, and I've also got one mounted on my 7.5 by 54 Mas, 4956 Mas. Oh, cool. Okay. And uh, so far, you know, testing <clears throat> them for accuracy, maintaining uh, maintaining accuracy on them, and, uh, of course, ease of operation. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a single, single color and not two color. Okay. But, I think I can't remember now. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I think they are. But uh, uh, testing them, like I said, for accuracy and uh, uh, the uh, hold up on the uh, recoil. Okay. Six five JDJ rifle. She's got a pretty good snap to it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So we'll uh, definitely be working with that. Plus uh, the forty nine fifty six is a semi rifle. And uh, let's see if it holds up against the beating on that action. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. Whenever you go with the aftermarket size, there's things you got to start looking at, like thread locking compounds on your screws and making sure you got a proper installation and make sure you don't have to, like, ream something out to get something to fit. I mean, you can really run into some issues. I will say this. If you're going to buy aftermarket size before we start to take a look at different options here, um, you know, really, if you don't feel comfortable changing them or you don't have, like, a sight pusher tool or... You know, you're worried about marring the finish on your on your firearm. Maybe just consider a gunsmith installation. Sometimes it's like mm -hmm. fifty to seventy five bucks, and then it's done. And most of those gun most of the gunsmiths are going to stand behind their work. Um, I know I had a set of Trigicon sights that I installed on my PT one eleven G two, and uh, the rears would stay on just fine. The rear sights were fine, but the fronts I ended up having to go to red uh, Loctite, which they always say don't ever use red. I had to to get the screw. The front sight would come loose within a couple magazines, no matter how tight I got the screw. I mean, I didn't want to overdo it because I didn't want to strip out the threads. And the Trigicon sights were absolutely fantastic. They're sweet, you know, metal sights. They were worth almost as much as the gun. And um, that front sight, I'm having to go to red Loctite in order to keep that front screw on. But it, it was fine after that. But there's little experiences you can run into. Yeah. I did the same on mine. I used red. But they're so little, that screw's so small, it's not hard to break loose on that. Yeah, no, that's true. It's true. For some reason, the factory screw works just fine with the one they give you in the aftermarket. Even if, and if you have to use your factory screw again, you know, there's a possibility it's just not going to retain that tension that it had from the factory. So that's an issue you can run into. So, uh, Jason, we're back, man. Um, did you want to mention anything or say anything? I'm afraid to have you switch over to your camera because I don't want you to get dropped again. Yeah, I uh, lose camera cord. Once you bump it, oh. then uh, gun tube loses your camera and it jams okay. y'all up but, but yeah i just used the uh sight paint um i've been mm -hmm. using for years i was recommending a company called bright sights 
and it's a paint in a bottle, you know, and you dab it in with a, a toothpick or a barbecue sure. skewer or something. Sure. Uh, recommend that. Use that for years. But the orange just didn't have the color like uh, like when you buy some aftermarket sites or, or a gun. It's that company. reddish orange, blood orange, tangerine yeah, that, color that you're talking about. There's this there's this off color. It's not quite like yeah. it's it's the, it's darker than construction orange, but at the same time, it's you know. It's bright, not so, as dark as red. So yeah. So yeah. the uh, Birchwood Casey super bright pins. Uh, it's called fluorescent red, but it's orange. It okay. m- closely matches the color of what you're looking for, mm-hmm. uh, of what you get when you buy some sites. You know, like Ameriglows or something mm-hmm. like that. But uh, I-, I swear by this stuff. Uh, cool, uh, easy to put on, easy to get off. I got a few little techniques I should make a video on. Uh, I just fill your your circle, your dot, I fill it up over full and then take the, the long edge of a toothpick or, or your barbecue skewer and scrape the outside of your site. Let the paint overfill to where it spills over and then just scrape it off the site. And even when it dries, you can pick at it a little bit with your mm-hmm. toothpick. Kind of sculpted, kind of, kind of etch it out. Yeah. And I use a magnifying glass and it'll oh. come out. Okay. Just as perfect quality, no distractions. Like if you don't get enough paint, you'll end up with the trace of the white underneath or something. Or you'll have an egg shape instead of a dot mm-hmm. or this mm-hmm. or that. And if you do your back ones, you can actually be painting them in and end up with one dot larger than the other one. And oh. that's going to screw with you. Okay. So I overfill to where there's paint on my site posts. And then I just wipe that paint off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and um, it shrinks a little, so a couple coats, but the colors are, are just fabulous. I, I like them. Um, I've even gone as far as some of my night sites. Mm-hmm. I found a way to color them and still leave the 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 glow, the, the vial. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the sites, even on my Nighthawk, mm-hmm. I painted my Nighthawk sites. <clears throat> um, the glass vial kind of sticks out a little bit farther. Oh, so okay. You can just smear paint, just fill it in, smear paint all over it, and then in just like one swipe with the the side of your toothpick, you can scratch that paint completely off that glass, and you will end up. And then with you got like a little perfect, bit of a donut, kind of a ring around it, just yeah. to give you some sort of yeah. side picture. Oh. Yeah, and it and you can do a really good job and really clean, not like it's uh, homemade looking or anything. Mm-hmm. It, it it the paint really won't stick to your blued or your you know your steel outside. Uh, just wipe it off. Even if it dries, it'll kind of just like pick off in one piece. It's not a mm-hmm. problem. And, um, uh, you know, you got to watch when you're cleaning it. Yeah. You know, you don't want to directly will take off any kind yeah. of like spray paint or any kind of non Cerakote. But, but, but it's you know. so easy. Yeah. Uh, it's so easy. Uh, a few seconds, keep your gun tilted to the site dots level, you know, straight up and down on something, mm-hmm. paint it, let it dry. Uh, it, it's a simple process and, and it's cheap. You can take a black one and do your rear sights if you don't want to change your sights. And uh, and it's not permanent. Uh, you can go right back to white just as easy as you had the color on there. A, Q, a Q-tip with some rubbing alcohol. Cool. Uh, good to go. And a lot well, of factory sights, if you're trying to make them black in the back, mm-hmm. simply try some rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. And just remove the factory white paint. Mm-hmm. You want to tip? Can... It might be a little bit easier. Do it. So on the rear sight, <clears throat> what I do when I'm painting mine is I take the slide off the gun and I put it in a, or even even I just put it in a clamp so it sits vertical. And instead of painting all that paint, I'll have it scrape off later. You dip that toothpick in the paint, so it's got a blob on the end of it. And that blob, if, you get, if you're a little careful, it'll just set right down in that hole for the site. Oh, so, okay. so you won't have to, and then it'll dry. You might have to do two coats, same thing, but you won't have to scrape stuff off. And then on that front side, if you're trying to do it around night sites, take a piece of masking tape and like roll it up in a backwards tube, you know, like just, and so that will, then you can put that up over that glass vial and then you can paint around it and pull it off. Then you don't have to do any of that scraping. True. Yeah. That's always an option too. Yeah. One thing I also try to do when um, uh, dipping a paint to do the dot, <clears throat> uh, especially on your second coat, I will take a pocket knife and just take the sharp point off of the toothpick, so it's just slightly flat. 
because some of that paint's thick and it's very soft. So when you're trying to like fill in and touch up the edges on your second coat, mm -hmm. the point of that toothpick will actually point, make a hole in your previous paint job. So yeah. I, I just smack it on the table, whatever, just dull it a little bit and then just be light with it. Cause you're going to need a couple coats cause all these paints kind of dry and settle. And if the gun's not like vertical, the paint can kind of dry a, a little unlevel, you know what I mean? It's a liquid in a, in a, it's going to go over gravity. Pulls yeah. It through, so so yeah, you got to yeah. maybe touch up one little edge. It'll show white and it might not even show up for a few days, but the, yeah, a second coat usually helps. It usually helps with the color. Um, but I usually try to start out white. Uh, it seems like the green or the orange on top of the white makes it a little bit brighter. You know what I mean? Like the, just like your car, you know, you use different mm -hmm. shades of primer to affect mm -hmm. the color. Um, I just try to do it over white and I get good results. I get a bright, bright color. Ooh. Um, uh, kind of like, like if I said you used a, a, another company's orange and it's kind of dark and then you try to put a different company's orange over top, you, you're still kind of stuck in the dark range you mm -hmm. know, if you kind of get what I mean. But mm -hmm. yeah. paint's a good way to go. It, it Anybody can do it. You'll find out whatever you, tricks or whatever you need for your own gun. But it's very easy. And and, and it doesn't... If It's very easy to make a professional-looking <clears> job, <throat> not like you just took... Uh, nail polish and that great big nail polish brush and smeared it all over. You know, what I mean, you can do a really nice job, and once you do it, uh, you'll probably do it to all your stuff. And it's not expensive. I got like, yeah, that's the best part about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got these three pins, uh, they're just like paint pins. Um, and what I've actually done instead of using the pen is I'll just find a piece of paper and make me a little paint puddle out of the pen and use a toothpick with it, but um. I don't know. I, th I think I got my midway for like 15 bucks and I was then you can use them for, you know, 10 never. years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They won't really dry out. Yeah. I've had the bottle kind where you pay 10 or $15 per bottle. And I've had some kits for $30 will get you several colors and some cleaner, but it, it's, it's a really cheap investment and it really does work. It works great. And I've had some like from the bright sites company, mm -hmm. uh, you can't get it. It'll pick off with a toothpick if you need to get rid of it. But as far as gun oils and gun cleaners, it holds on. up extremely durable. That's I mean, good to know. Because it durable. would suck to put all this time into doing it. And then the first time you clean yeah. your gun, you're not paying attention. You just wipe it right off. And it's like, yeah. uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, but my, my only gripe with that one is the orange is just not the, the, the tint that you're really desiring. Mm -hmm. The green is fantastic. Well, uh, the, the green to to just glows. Yeah. It glows outside unbelievable. It glows inside. But the orange is a little disappointing from the Bright Size Company. But their product, I will say, is durable. Durable is, is maybe as you'll ever find. Mm -hmm. But uh, I also love aftermarket sites. I have an MGM Sight Pusher and a couple different shoes for different guns. Um, yeah, that, that really becomes your main issue with the aftermarket sites. If you can't change them yourself, you need to find a gunsmith locally. But uh, if you have a lot of different guns, uh, I wouldn't say maybe go buy a sight pusher if you only have one or two pistols. But if you have several guns and, and you run into it like, oh, man, I wish I had these night sights or I wish, I wish, I wish. You're going to wish forever and you're not going to have the gun you want. So yeah. at that point, you're going to need to invest in a good sight pusher, not a $29 one from Amazon. You know, get something good, get you pad advice, you know, some sight punches, some hammers. Mm -hmm. it, can, it can be done. Uh, it's a little funny Whoa. sticking your brand new gun in a vice for the first time and hammering the hell out of it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it might be better for you just to get a sight pusher that, you know, will do the front sights on your pistol. You know, that, for the cost of a couple hours at the gunsmith, you can have that whole setup, watch a couple videos, teach yourself how to do it and then go to work. You know? Yeah, especially yeah. like if Jason said, if you have a lot of guns, because a lot of guys want the exact same set of sights on every gun. So they're mm -hmm. so their sight picture is consistent across the board. Um, so yeah, that, that's definitely makes sense. Cause yeah, even if you have to spend a hundred or even 150, by the time you change out a couple sets of sites, you've paid for yourself. Oh yeah. A couple of suggestions here as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, back when I mentioned, uh, when I was shooting competition, we used what they call a carbide lamp. Now this, this lamp 
smokes up your sights. It will not damage them. And when you clean it, that stuff wipes right off. But while you're in the match, uh, it darkens that slide. Like I mentioned, takes the glare off of that slide mm -hmm. and darkens those sights. Yeah. So that you can see what's for me now. This is just for me. I have difficulty uh, seeing about black on black. And uh, with this carbide lamp, it gives it just enough so that it outlines those sights against the black center of that target. Uh, also, they, um, I don't know if you guys watch Gavin Tube or Ultimate Reloader, but he just did a review on a uh, Lyman sight pusher. Oh. And I am going to invest in that piece of equipment because that is a very nice rig. It's set up for uh, basically any semi-auto that you have, and I believe it will do the revolvers too. Like I said, I haven't gotten much uh, information on it mm -hmm. just yet, but I'm going to. And uh, he, I guess he said it was right around $100 or so for this, uh, for this piece of equipment. But if you do a lot of competition shooting, you've got to change uh, the sights, then uh, that's going to be a good uh, piece Money of well spent. to have. So you know, I've got uh, three or four uh, uh, semis that I've got to do a little work with anyway. Another thing that I've got to do is learn how to stake in a front sight on a 45 uh, 1911. I've not done that. I've changed sights and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. I've never uh, gone through the process of staking in a front sight. I'm sure there's information on uh, YouTube about it. Yes. Yeah. YouTube has violated our rights as far as that goes, learning something. Well, anything I ever put up with sights and red dots and scopes automatically gets limited or no ads on us. I'm just used to it. <laughs> a, a, a single shot. Ridiculous. Yes, sir. Um, Colt puts out some videos on YouTube. They used to call it, uh, I, I don't know, Firearm Tuesday or something like that. But Justin Baldini from Colt puts out some videos in their archives. They don't have a ton of videos either. So yeah. in their archives, he's got one on how to change a post front sight on a 1911. Mm -hmm. And he does it in like less than five minutes right in front of you, how easy wow. it is I'm sitting on a table. A file, and there's a special little metal hook type tool that you're going to use to to flare out the new one it yeah, just sticks yeah. it in a uh, simple little hammer and a file and uh he'll, he'll show you how to change those post sites cool. uh-huh well, that's a good idea i'll check that out i have a uh, thing at the house it's a kit and i've done a few of them and it takes a little time to do it but what it is is a uh uh, situation, something like fingernail polish, but it's uh, fiberglass. And uh, you have to modify the front sight or the rear sight, whichever one you're working on. Mm -hmm. And after you get the modification done on that, then it's a matter of uh, taking a little bit of this stuff on a toothpick and just working it into uh, the... Uh, notch or hole or whatever the case may be <clears throat> on uh, the sites and then you let that dry you overdo it a little bit <clears throat> and take a set of uh, uh, Swiss files they're real small files file kit and you work that down very carefully until you get it uh, squared off and uh, set up right I've got it on my AMT hardballer as a neon green Cool. And uh, if you want to change the colors, it's just a matter of taking a little of heat and uh, putting it up against that that uh, addition, and it'll shrink it, and uh, you can pull it right out of there and change the color if you uh, wish to do so. Like I said, that's time-consuming, and it's very fine work, so you have to have a good bench magnifier, lighted magnifier to, to do this. And it's pretty much a gunsmith operation. It takes a little while to do it. Right on, man. Let's uh, go ahead and catch up with some of the YouTube comments that we got going on out there. Uh, let's see, where do we leave off at? Because I was going to get to them before we got disconnected. Um, YNH says that CZ puts True Dot on some of their firearms. Those are pretty bright. 
we answer the question on the red dots. We have some of us have them, some of us don't. <clears throat> X Adam one says I like Trigicon night sights. The three dot style ones have a factory look. The Trigicon sights allow me to spot my gun in the dark easier, and they're offered in standard as well as suppressor heights. And that's the other thing too is when you buy them, you got to take into consideration: do you want to get a sight that's going to co-witness with your red dot? If you happen to put a red dot or RMR on your semi-automatic or any pistol for that matter, do you want those sights to co to co-witness where you can use them at the same time or not? If you get something with a threaded barrel and it doesn't have suppressor height sights, not every gun that has a threaded barrel comes with suppressor height sights. I mean, many times that's an aftermarket add-on. I like the ones that do have the taller sights. So when you have a suppressor, you can use your sights, but many times you don't get that. Matt Sexy says, I've used the Birchwood KC Colt. Oh, we, we read about that already. Uh, Echoes Reloading Chamber says, howdy, Travis and crew. Good morning, Echo. Good morning. Uh, YNH says, I like the aluminum black markers from Birchwood KC. I think I need to pick up a set of those paint markers. I think that's going to be uh, that's going to be something that definitely we need to add to the uh, to the accessories collection here. Uh, let's see here. Echoes Reloading Chamber says that uh, Maryland Gunworks makes the best sight pusher on the market. Built like a brick uh, poop house, it supports the sides of the slide while it pushes the dovetail sides out, and that's, it does front front sights as well. That's the one I have. The MG. Okay. Uh, Maryland gun GW work or whatever Maryland pro, gun works. Okay, pro because uh, I needed it for a 1911, and and like I said, you can buy some, some you got to check the uh, the tool itself. Some of them don't have enough length in the tool to work on a 1911, because um, they M MGW sells a smaller one called like the Range Compact or whatever. Mm -hmm. It it won't make it to the front of a Beretta, and it won't make it to the front of a 1911. Uh, okay okay just because of the dust cover on the slide but um yeah that's a super high quality product but it has a a, a, a shoe that's basically mimics your slide rails and you buy that shoe for the exact gun you're using and uh so the 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 tool is not actually contacting your slide you have adjustment screws on the side to touch the slide. Mm -hmm. There's a plastic spacer in between it. So nothing's going to harm the finish. Yeah, so nothing's going to mar it or scratch it because that would suck if you've got yeah. a really expensive gun. <laughs> and what it's, yeah. uh, I've also used it for is, it, well, the other thing about what you got to watch about a sight pusher is how tall it is. Not only do you need to get on your sight pretty good you can't push at the top you'll just break your sight in half mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you have to get down low but you don't want that tool to slide across the top of your slide and scratch the hell out of it mm -hmm. so there's like a adjustment that comes down through the top of a little pad and to raise your height so if, with the adapters and everything they'll do just about every gun with no damage to your pistol cool. but uh, the nicest thing about the Maryland that i've used is you can stick the gun in a vice and take the top off the actual rope the screwing side to side you mm -hmm. can take that yeah. off and basically now you have your gun locked your slide locked in your vice on your table with all the room to access it and you can tap the slide out or the side out with a punch if you have to uh in the and you're just using half of your sight pushing tool and it's better than clamping the whole slide in a vice and oh, absolutely. scratching it or pad yeah. you can just use that bottom tool to hold it to because some sites if you go to crank on them sight pushers and that sight doesn't like snap and start coming loose you better stop and you're probably going to have to punch it out by hand because i've done it already uh that tool easily has enough force to just shear your sight in half, even yeah, rear sights. Well, I sheared, know. I sheared a rear 1911 sight in half. Oh God! And it did not. The the <laughs> dovetail did not budge, not one bit from the bottom of the, oh from the God, slide. Man. So, uh, uh, sometimes you got to tap them out, but you can always use it to put it back in, and you can fine tune it, adjust it left or right. Yeah, I had yeah. that issue on my APX. I was trying to adjust the sights, and that, that sight would not budge with the sight pusher. In fact, it almost bent the shaft on my pusher. Did you guys check for mounting screws on those things? Make sure there wasn't a screw underneath the slide? Like, wow. Yeah, the there was, and they were just, it was just in sight. Just crazy dovetail in there? Yeah, um, I didn't read the directions. See, I was doing it on a Colt, mm -hmm. just basic government model, 1911, and I didn't read the sights or the instructions where it says if you can't bust it by hand you know with the 
<laughs> the little yeah. handle. Stop. Stop. And take it with a punch. I didn't read that. And just one, two little turns, it sheared the site completely out. And it was a lot of advice off uh, YouTube people and everything out there. I fixed it without scratching my gun. I took a little uh, uh, triangle file. And I started, and it took me about an hour, but I slowly sliced a groove all the way across of what was left in the site mm -hmm. till I got almost down to where I was almost going to touch the surface of the slide. Mm -hmm. And it gave it some room to pinch and relax, and then it tapped right on out. Oh, with, uh, God. Yeah, then it came out after you freaking carved it out, basically. <laughs> yeah, if you, yeah, it was, a, it was a panic moment for a minute. I didn't want to send it back to Colt with a site yeah. ripped in half yeah <clears throat> well uh real quick here guys we got a super chat uh from savage sharpshooter 93 this might be the first one from savage sharpshooter uh savage sharpshooter says just because i'm up congrats on being one of the top unofficial members of ss93 productions all right so i guess i got a production company i belong to now so i'm in the big pocket of savage sharpshooter so i don't know i don't know what that means but uh savage sharpshooter thank you very much for the super chat i do appreciate it and a uh, shout out to you uh, Mario Moses out there. He says, Hola, muchachos. My name is Mario. Hola, muchacho. Me llamo. Gravis pe once. Uh, let's see here. Uh, YNH says, anyone try out the TFX sites from True Glow? We're going to talk about those as we look at some of the different companies that have sites that are out there. Uh, because we're, we're a big, we're a True Glow family. I've got family members. That's usually what they put on their, on their guns. And it's not because they're cheaper because True Glow sites are just as expensive as Trigicon, which is just as much as Novak. There's this like $75 to $150 price point that you find for most of your night sites and or fiber optic night sight combos that are out there. So, uh, yeah. Let's see. YNH says, don't try to hammer out the sites on the CZP01. They are in tight. So, yeah, you really got to be careful. The last thing I want to do is see somebody put a mar or a mark in their slide or mess up a really expensive gun or you know, break their site pusher and then they're out a hundred dollars. And a lot of times that's not going to be covered by, by warranty because it was user error. You know, you got to watch out for that. Jason, when you're talking about now, Jason, I can't remember. You said you have damaged a site pusher or not. I've damaged the gun. Uh, yeah, it actually did make a slightly little nick on the side of the pusher, but you still okay. have plenty of room to make it work. Uh, the, they're replaceable. Um, you can you can replace the actual pushing block on the, these mm -hmm. uh, fifteen bucks twenty bucks because they're interchangeable. You got you have to change it for a nineteen eleven because the sights are so low. Uh, and then there's like a standard one. Then there's one cut for Glocks. Oh, and yeah. then there's there's some specific different shoe attachments for it for the pusher block itself, so it'll fit any gun that you that you need. Like I said the trick is. You can't have that pusher block come down and scratch the whole top of your gun every time you crank it. Yeah. So, but uh, uh, yeah, it is possible to damage them. They're yeah. per, they're very precision made. The MGWs. Uh, it's an expensive tool. Uh, it, it, it's it's a little frustrating sometimes. You got to do things over and over, but you end up with perfectly aligned sights with your gun not damaged. And that's kind of what you're looking for in the long run. So I got my, they cost around $300. Ooh. And then the, the individual shoe for each gun runs, uh, I think around $20. Oh, that's not so bad. Once but, you make the uh, initial investment, then you're good to go. Yeah. But <clears> you're, <throat> you're understanding one thing. Well, you'll get to it when we get to your websites here. When I pick out some night sites and then they'll come with like an adjustable rear. You're at $150, $160, you know? So you, you have an investment just in those sites. You don't want to bust them in half. You don't mm -hmm. want to break them. Mm -hmm. And you don't want them in there where f you paid a gunsmith or something to put them in, it, but they were off a little bit. So you either got to go to the range and then go back to him, tell him, move it a little bit and work back and forth. Mm -hmm. If you have more than a few guns or, you know, you plan on over time having more, or you got friends. I have, I've, I've done pistols for friends because they have no, you know, no ability to change their sights or anything. So I told him, you know, just buy me the shoe that fits your gun and I'll do it for you. Oh, cool. So, so, you know, you got, it, it, it's a very valuable tool and it sounds like it costs a lot, but say you got two guns and you want two sets of Novak night sights, that's 300 and some dollars. 
Yeah, yeah I think so it's money well spent, especially if you if you are comfortable using tools and you've got you know the brass punches and you've got you know the time and the and the experience. It's definitely worth it because it's gonna be the same thing as say, taking one or two guns to a gunsmith for a couple hours worth of work or an install uh, fee. You know. Hey, uh, real quick, let's let uh, Squibload go ahead and introduce himself. Are you Squibload or Squiblift? So Squiblift is with us this morning. Squiblift, what is going on? How you doing, man? You okay? I'm tired. You're tired. Did you stay up late last night? Was it a good party or what? Uh, you know how it is. You start watching YouTube videos and you look oh. over at the clock. Mm-hmm. Then you go to Facebook and check out your updates. And then you go back to YouTube. Dude, that's I, bad. I, I hear you. Not, now you're going too far. <laughs> you, you must have been up late. It was like 3 a.m. when you made a comment in my video or something like that. Oh, yeah. my God, Squid. Jeez. Well, <laughs> get your I don't coffee. recommend watching Defense Dead videos at 3 a.m., but... Yeah, I do. <laughs> Ooh, all right. I, I do. I woke up this morning. It's the first thing I watched was the Defense Dad Wallet video. I was like, heck yeah, let's see what this guy put up there this morning. I was so, like, wow, somebody who's up before me, that's nuts. No, no. See, it sounds more like I went to bed after watching a video at about the same time that you woke up and watched the video. I got some, some coffee brewing right now. I got the tripod over there. I did my three-minute intro <laughs> trying to sound <laughs> like I'm – he remotely interested when I like really <laughs> want is a cup of coffee. I don't want to talk about it. Exactly. It smells so good. Hey, Rolling Trip's got a good comment here. I never thought of this. He goes, I always use calipers to compare factory sites to aftermarket before trying to install them. Uh, it saves a lot of time on the back end of installing them, which could be a good point. If you get something that's a couple like, you know, like hundreds of an inch wider, there's a chance they're not going to go on or there's a chance that you might have some difficulty getting those to install. I never thought about just testing the side of those sites, the size of those sites before you actually start to install them. Um, Echoes Reloading Chamber says Smith and Wesson's M and P pistols have some of the tightest sites on the market. They actually use a red thread locker material and the dovetail of the sites when factory installing them. Holy crap! And take a blowtorch to those things. Um, Sam of Anarchy says, "Do you guys have any experience with a six hour P three twenty RXP compact nine millimeter?" I don't. You guys have any experience with that handgun? I've tested a P320 no. before, but just not not that particular model. Nope. I mean, I do like the P320s. They fire fine. I, they're great guns to shoot. Uh, I think I, tra I actually tested a 40 on my channel. Which which model did he ask? The P320 RXP Compact. Hmm. No. I, I mean, I have shot one, but I, I, I don't, don't. I wouldn't say that's experience. I shot it. It was okay. Right on. What do we got here? Mario Moses says, stop, hammer time. And now they're exchanging stories about seeing MC Hammer back in the 90s. Uh, who was it that asked me a question? Somebody asked me a question earlier if I've ever tried the Blackout Coffee Company Blueberry Crumble Coffee. Squib, I think I sent you some after I tested it. I did a review on it over a year ago. So the not Black Rifle, but Blackout Coffee Company um, Blueberry Crumble Coffee. I think I really enjoyed it. I, I, I don't think I disliked it at all. Um, you pair it up with a nice, you know, French vanilla creamer and you're good to go. So, yeah, I think, yeah, uh, you sent me some and I, I might have reviewed it too. Is it Patriot over there talking about blueberry coffee? No, I thought maybe it was Mad Sucksy that was asking us if we had tried it before. I, it was somebody, I'm trying to find the comment right now and I can't, but uh, I love any I mean, kind of what, blueberry what, coffee. What, what, what am I thinking? Pa no, Patriot wouldn't be. He would be trying to start something, wouldn't he? That would be him asking questions about that. No, it was mad sexy. He goes, what do you think about Blacked Out Coffee Company's Blueberry Crumble? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't had enough coffee that I'm actually thinking. Patriot wouldn't be watching the show today. It's about sites. <laughs> well, he made a comment here recently. Patriot in the Dark just said, the site pusher tools and all the different kinds of sites sure sound expensive for a fad. So yeah, if you are visually impaired, you may... You know, you might not benefit from aftermarket sites. That's all I got to say. But what if he took the sites off of his guns and sold them on eBay? Doesn't he just paint and black them all he out? He should. He should. He should just take them all off and sell them. If you don't need them, then why even bother? I mean, well, why even? if he decides to resell the gun later, they'll be like, where, where are the sites? <laughs> well, maybe he can find somebody out there that's also visually impaired and they'll, they'll buy it and they won't care about the sites. I mean, well, he, he's getting like, to that point. Yeah. He could be like, what do you mean? Where's the sites? I got screwed. <laughs> so echoes reloading chamber says that tool will pay for itself if you have a small group of friends that own handguns they will all be hitting you up for site changes you can give them a really good deal and still pay for the tool so like you can say hey 
buy the shoe. Let me keep the shoe and then I'll put the sights on for you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So let's, uh, since we've been talking for almost an hour here, let's just get right into it. I don't know what's going to happen when I do a screen share. If we drop, then we'll just continue this over on StreamYard. We're just going to start at Trigicon real quick because they they make a high quality site that, I, that I've purchased before and have experience with and seems to work really, really well. So we'll just go to Trigicon's website. They're pretty simple. They've got them. I just went ahead and brought up the Glock link. I know vomit for some of you, but uh, they have a Smith & Wesson link and a Beretta link and so on. So you're looking at about $125. They're nice. They've got a decent little ring around the back that's fairly visible. In fact, if you look at the thumbnail for today's Caliber Corner episode, the pistol on the left, the PT-111 G2, I was one of the first people to get a set of Trigicon sights for that particular gun. They made one. They still make sights for it today. They quit, and then they actually brought them back because so many of the G-Series guns were still using those PT-111 sights. Now I believe they use Glock sights on the newest G-Series Taurus pistols and maybe the TX-22. But uh, these are fine. Now, guys, I'm doing a screen share, so I can't really say what, see what you guys are saying on the uh, the panel side. So if you want, just interrupt me if you got something you want to say, okay? Well, I was just going to um, say that's yeah. what I put on my SR9. And I, I, mean, I personally didn't care for them, but, again, it's because they had um, – the front dot was really small on them. Okay, okay. Yeah, they are, they are fairly small. Um, they do have them as a non-backlit version, which I didn't even realize Trigicon did, did that. They do just a simple – non-tritium white dot site for $44, which isn't bad. Uh, if you want some nice steel sites, if you want to get rid of the polymer sites that you're running, these are all, I believe, Trigicon sites, unless they stay at otherwise, they're all metal enclosures. They're all metal. You can you can hand charge if you had to, or one arm charge if you had to. They're very, very just upright in the front. So uh, Trigicon makes, you know, some decent ones, and they've got tons and tons of different options and colors and stuff you just got to go look at your particular pistol and see what uh, what they offer for so that's a good place to start if you don't know where to go um i did have trouble with the front screws staying tight in the front side i did eventually have to use the red lock tight as i mentioned before to get that to work well uh let's see here the next one that we have we'll get over to the true glow so true glow has got tons and tons of options and accessories these are what i also have experience with my uh stepdad tends to put aftermarket sites on all of his pistols and he's a huge fan of the like the excess what's well, excess big dot sites and also the tfx pro sites which run anywhere from basically like you know we're seeing 40 dollars to 81 dollars to 165 what's cool about these is you get the daytime fiber optic use you get the daytime fiber optic appearance as you guys can see but then you also have the nighttime glow of the tritium and so that's pretty cool. They use giant cylinders that are enclosed in machine steel. And they've also got that shelf in the front so you can do a hand charge. Well, depends on the site you're going with. Like the pros are flat in the front. You get that 90 degree cut basically. And then the standard tritium sites are just slightly, you know, edged. You won't be able to hand charge those. If that's something that you really care about. If not, it doesn't matter. But uh, the true glows are pretty good. Do you guys have any experience with true glows at all? Oh, yeah. I've got uh, two of those RD30s that I was mentioning before. That site's a pretty neat little site because uh, it's even got a little bit of a sunshade on the uh, front of it. Oh, ah, okay, to, uh, okay. To help cover that front lens. And uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, it's being tested for maintaining accuracy and uh, uh, the abuse from uh, heavier calibers. Okay. Oh, buddy, you better be paying attention here. He's probably listening to the podcast. He's all excited. <laughs> um sam of anarchy's got a question real quick he says which sr9 does he have the standard of the sr9c uh defense said what did you used to have what was a compact wasn't it sr9c no nope. no it was the full size the stainless oh. two, two don't stainless slide i yeah. will say uh, back to the trigicons the reason i chose those is they make one that rear sight's fully adjustable they make trigicon makes one that just replaces the insert of the factory rear sight, so you'd have to change out the whole sight shoe. Um, it was pretty, and it, if if my eyesight wasn't as bad as it was, they would have been great. It's just I need a bigger front sight. Okay. But specifically for the SR9, you can take the pin and the spring out, and then the, all just that metal insert comes out, and you put in the night sight version of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm going back to them right now. So, um, like I said, they've got a lot of different options. Basically, you just look up your gun. And you can choose whatever you want based off the type of sites you're looking for and whatever you want to go with. Yep. <coughs> cool, yeah, Trig cool. Trigicon's one of the brands that 
I might use. I there's really only maybe two two or three brands that I've considered if I was going to go with aftermarket sites, and one of them I've used, but not. I haven't used Trigicon yet, but they've they've got some the the night sites kind of uh, appeal to me from the standpoint of it, it might help me uh, pick up the target uh, a little bit better, pick up the the sites I should say a little bit better. And mm -hmm. I think Trigicon they were doing it first. I think they were they they were in the market back in the early '80s. I want to say. Okay, yeah, that's what I was about ready to bring up. I think Trigicon's been doing this a long time. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, countless factory guns have come with Trigicon brand sights on. Yeah, I think it's definitely money well spent. Uh, what is it? Five years is like the half life on the uh, the glow on the tritium. You can you're lucky if you get ten, ten years of use out of them. Or what? How, how long do they typically last? Because I mean, anything I've ever bought had new night sights on it. So I can't remember, but I've I've heard some people say that some of them have made it past their their lifespan. Kind of like a car battery, they're good for about seven years, but some of them make it eleven. So uh, I don't I. I've I've heard some people say that they've been lucky and, and theirs have, have made it uh years past their, their lifespan, but I couldn't remember what that lifespan was. Okay. Yeah, I need I know I need to replace the ones on my nine thirty eight. Oh yeah, yeah. The SIG ones I think you can get like maybe five years out of them or something like that. There's a few complaints. I think they've fixed them now. They've had some issues with earlier sites that they were selling, but um Nice Strike's out there. He says good morning. Good night, good morning, Nice Strike. And oh, Echo's, nice re <laughs> Echo's Reloading Chamber says, I am side impaired. I am legally blind, and I shoot with a guy that's 100% blind, and he's got a Glock 26 with red dot fancy sights. He goes, I asked him why, and he says that everybody else has them. And I laughed. So there you go. So, you know, <laughs> it's okay if, if you can't see. It doesn't matter. If you want sights, you put sights on your gun, man. You do whatever you want to do, right? Besides, <laughs> you never know if you're going to have to hand off a pistol to the grandkid to help defend against the zombie apocalypse. You know, True. Or, True. So, see, they really are more than just a fad patriot. Yeah, it's it, they're they're actually something that people think can be can be you know usable. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, Trigicon. I don't think you can go wrong with that. I, I think you're going to be in, in good shape if you go that route. Um, True Glows have always been good, regardless of what you think of their cheap red dots that they sell. Their pistol sights are fantastic. Now, I know that my stepdad has done gunsmith installation. He's paid for gunsmith installation on all of them. Just because he didn't want to risk, nor does he really have the tools to do these changes. I know a lot of the times it's just a punch set and a hammer and a screwdriver, but a lot of people just don't want to mess with it. And if they want to get a gunsmith installed, more power to them, you know. <coughs> and I but I mean, like your rear, your rear sides can be pretty easy because they simply slide in, and then you've got a screw that keeps them in place. Yeah, I put a link in the uh, in the live chat there. New York Outcast did a, a review video on the TFX oh. Pro sites. Oh, cool. Uh, okay, now. Now, this is one of his earlier videos, so it's going to sound like he's in the next room. He had audio issues there for a while, uh, so okay. feel free to tease him over the audio. Uh, I, I, I strongly encourage that, but uh, don't let that be a reflection of, of uh, the, the audio quality in his current uh, videos. But, yeah, he just goes over them. I thought he did a fair fair review on them. Uh, okay. kind of made me want to uh, uh, give True Glows a shot. Uh, one of my questions was, you know... It, is, is it made in America? And the ones he reviewed were American made, but some of their stuff isn't. No. And if, if yeah. it's about the same price as something that's imported, why wouldn't I buy American? Unless of course there no American com company makes it. So I do like the fact that they, they had that option. I mean, at the true glow, um, Trigicon, Novak, I believe they're all American made for their pistol sites. And that was, again, that was one of the reasons why my stepdad went with true glow also. But they're all in that eighty to one hundred and fifty dollar price range, depending on the gun and depending on which options you want to spec out your sights with. So yeah, you're going to spend about the same price. A lot of it just comes down to like maybe which color combinations you like better or which ones are most visible to you. Now, with a lot of these, you're going to be going with a thicker chunk of your sight, which means your sight picture could be blocked more. So just keep that in mind because you're going with something that's not as slender or sleek as a factory sight. So they might cover up more of your sight at a distance. So obviously, when you put these sights on, you want to make sure that you you know, practice with them and, and, and definitely get comfortable with them and make sure that they stay on the gun. If they start moving at all, you need to stop and go back and figure out what's going on. Uh, let's go ahead and check out Novak real quick because they are one of the original site companies out there also. So these are interesting. Novak makes an adjustable tritium bar 
dot set. Let's just click on one random one and check it out here. Just show you what we're talking about here. So these are adjustable rears. Now they're Novac. They've got that slant on the front. So you may not be able to do that single hand charge that you want to. They've got a little tritium bar in the rear and then they've got a dot. So you basically just get the dots centered in that little cut and make sure it's over your bar and you're essentially going to be on target. But then you also have that adjustability for I'm assuming windage and elevation. It might only be elevation only. I'm not sure, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I yeah. have these sites right here. Oh, you do. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. I have a few sets of the, the, the Novax with the, the adjustables on the back. Mm -hmm. I don't have the tritium bars. I want solid black. Okay. But, uh, you can adjust, uh, vertical. You have to use regular traditional sight pusher or punch to, to do side to side with them. But, uh, they, they work pretty good. Uh, the only thing about them when we, you were looking at them there, the, um, uh, they kind of like are, are dished in, in the back. They're not flat. Oh, you know what okay, I mean? So okay. you still got, you, you got some, some curvatures and some things to, you know, maybe catch your attention, but, um, they're, they're, they're pretty rugged. They're just about as rugged as a fixed site. That design is, uh, typical, like target adjustable sites, uh, you know, saying. have knobs yeah. on the, the screws on the sides and all this, and they're a little more delicate. This is pretty heavy duty. But uh, it, it just lacks that flush in the back look. It's kind of indented a little. Mm -hmm, but, um, mm -hmm. I've yeah, had, I see that. Yeah. Um, I've had great luck with them. Uh, the notch is a little wide when you use it with a fiber optic. But, uh, uh, yeah, they, they've worked fine. No vax, I've never had any issue with. And, again, the prices, you know, 130 140 150 this is pretty much on par with everybody else. So they're not like they're charging you three times more. Now there's – Plain rear, if you want plain rear, adjustable plain rear, which is, you don't see that a whole lot. Well, I guess you would, maybe on older guns, you would, that came with like a, like a target site. It almost looks like something you'd see like on a European gun, yeah, that's an adjustable what rear site. Yeah. Blacked that's out. That's what I'm running on uh three 1911s okay. right there. How do you like that? Is that pretty good? Is that working pretty good for you? Yeah. I like it a lot. Just other than I wish it was flat. Just the rear the was just all the yeah, way across. I wish this was, you know, flat, but other uh -huh. than that, it, if it wasn't caved in, uh, so seventy dollars isn't isn't too bad. And they got a Glock plane, uh, Glock plane black front that you can get also. So if you don't want polymer sights on your gun, you worry about breaking them and but you, your, you know, yeah. You have choices here. You have like if you go a fiber optic on the front, you're going to have a, a smaller, very skinny front sight. Okay, then you can go to what's more like a, your regular sight, maybe your factory come with, and then you see these guys have mega dot, basically big dot sights. Mm -hmm. 0.225 um, of an inch. Yeah. yeah, I'm using those. Uh, you'd be surprised how just like 20 more thousands in a site width, it gives you that much more color, that much more surface area for that color. And, and they, it, it, it just seem like a night and day difference. Now, yeah, they cover up the bullseye, you know what I mean, on your targets. But for self-defense or, Eric, like I said, I worry about it. What if I don't have my glasses on? Uh, yeah. those big dots really, really help a lot. I, I would practice these on a, like a human outline silhouette target, paper target with these just to really get comfortable with accepting the fact that you're probably not going to get sub MOA accuracy at 25 feet. You know, you're probably going to be a one or two inch group just because of how thick those are. But the acquisition of picture and that speed that you can acquire your target, I think that definitely, uh, would 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 make up for any kind of trade-off that you're looking at anything that's going to make it that much easier you know yeah you're pretty much up close you're going to do some point shooting you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh you're not like going to mm -hmm. line up your sights if we're in a bad situation just that great big piece of color out there in front would just yeah. help you, you'll notice as soon as you pull a gun or draw a gun dry firing in a house how much difference that big dot is you're like you will like it like oh wow i wish all my stuff had this but if you're trying to hit bullseyes at the range at 25 yards, you got to understand it completely covers it up. Yeah. Yeah. But you can do it. Um, I, I use, I set my, just my stuff up for like, I cover my target with the dot. Yeah. I don't go above it. I cover the target with the dot. So when you end up with the, the night vision, the night sight vial there in the middle, you almost have like two rings. You have your color ring of orange mm -hmm. or green. Mm -hmm. Then you have that other little dot. When I'm trying to hit bullseyes far off, I just kind of imagine and use that little tiny, you know, glow file 
as my dot for a bullseye. But those sights are definitely big enough. They will completely cover up a target. Well, if but, you if you look, though, the ones that have the smaller ring around it compared to the bigger one, the housing of the sights the same width. So they're they're both going to cover it up. I, I would think it, 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 I think it's just kind of a mental thing with the bigger, bigger dot. Well, Does that make brand, sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. This the, all brands are different. Some of them you you'll look at the site and that circle's cut almost thin to the edge of the site too. Well, I suppose those depends on, on the these, model of the yeah. gun. Yeah, that's why I was noticing on these because it, they just mill it out wider on the big dots compared to the other one. Yeah, you got to look at it. You got to match it to how big the notch is on your rear sight. Yep. Yeah, because you can get like if you got a big dot on the front and you didn't change the factory rear one it'll always be in the middle of your sights. There will be no gap on each side. It's just too big. Sure. Uh, it's only a few thousands either way, but it makes a big difference. But like I said, with all the companies aftermarket sites, you can find what you want. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah. I'll, I'll put a tip out there for um, fiber optic sites. Um, get you replacement rods. They will not last forever. They will break very easily. They will fall out. And they will just kind of get dirty too and get a little dingy. And you'll notice like you can buy some aftermarket fiber optic rods, uh, try to get some good ones. You'll just notice the quality might be a little different than the one you come with. It might have a little bit better, richer color. You know what I mean? Okay. And, okay. and you're talking what are they, a dollar a piece maybe? Yeah, I know it two dollars a piece. You know, one stick will probably do you two, three times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But like, if you get one like from True Glow or somebody like that, and it kind of the color is a little funny or a little cheap, it's a little more pink than it is red or whatever. Just go buy a, a, a replacement fiber optic in that diameter size, and you'll you'll notice a difference. Well, uh, and so, so, so some of those, like the ones I've used from Lakeline for my Tauruses. They come with multiple rods, and they're in it. They're they're cheap. Okay, so with regard to that, if you've got a problem where it's kind of working itself loose as you're shooting more and more and more, the recoil maybe is shaking it loose or something else like that. Have any of you guys tried anything to try to hold it in place, like a little dab of silicone or something else, or uh, is it just me that that's had that issue where I've, I've actually had the thing work itself, it back itself out. Just get um, a new one and melt it. I, I what I I noticed that, but in me it was an it was an operator error. I was trying I was trying to use just a regular big lighter, and if I used one of those longer camping lighters, it allowed me more control, so it melted tighter, so I didn't have that issue. Okay, okay. So because I was getting the heat too close to it, and it was melting it prematurely, and it was like it was actually melting like the middle part of it. So I I just got the heat a little bit further away, more control. And when it melts and shrinks up on that site, it tightens it up better if you use something like that. Okay. All right. And and I prefer those lighters, too. They're better for, for lighting a grill or, I'm, well, I use a propane torch for the grill. But still, yeah, those, yep. those the, the flexible, the longer flexible ones? Yep. Yep. Okay. And and as far as uh, just go get some more, you said, are, have you found any situation where you've bought a different brand and it's not, I guess, interchangeable or... They all pretty much just fit in there, and kind of uh, there's different sizes out there. Well, I mean, mm. you could cut them down, right? No the diameter. The diameter, diameter, the diameter, diameter thickness. Yeah. yeah. All right, because I've just got the one, and it came with extras, but uh, yeah, I'm I don't know where I put them. Well, yeah. yeah well, if you can go back to the original company that you bought them from, they might I, make them too. I can, but when he's he's saying, you know, this color might be a little off, oh. uh, and I'm there thinking, well, what if I bought a couple from a couple different companies, and mm -hmm. you know, but yeah. yeah. See, I would think. Okay, I guess I just look at the spec and see if they've got the same diameter, and then, all right, I see where you're going. And this, I'm just looking at the tour specific guns over on Lakeline LLC, but like they I, have I their did, own tubes for their own sites that they manufacture. Yeah, I yeah. did these both on my daughter's TX22 and my G2C. I've yet to do it to my G3C. When uh, when I change mine, I don't know if I do it wrong or not, but. Uh, you're talking about using the lighter and heating them up. I flip the lighter and I bring it up and I start out like a foot away where it's not even going to do anything. And I just slowly watch the site and move up and I end up seeing it melt and, and shape, a, 
you know, that I want. And I'm still fairly far away from the gun. It's not like I got the lighter up there next to it. Yeah. And I do I'm it in six kinda, inches away and it seems to have melted it. You know? Yeah. I, I do it in kind of quick burst, get close back off, let it melt. And then I let that one cool off completely. And then I hold with a pick or my finger on the other side. So that's tight. So when you're melting the other one in, it doesn't slip and to go back and forth. Yeah. I, I've, I've kind of like, tried to touch them too a little bit when they're warm i've, I've done different things uh yeah it all seems to work if it if it melts real good and it does right you you always end up with a nice clean round circle at least on the the side that you're seeing you know what i mean uh looking down the barrel on the outside i've been known to just squish it try to make it stay in there you know yep cool man uh, a couple comments real quick just to just to talk about here we've got X Adam one says I sighted my guns at seven to eight yards and I like to put the center dot on the target. I don't shoot my handguns at 25 yards. Um, anyone try the CL site says YNH. Uh, no, I've never seen the CL site before. Not that I know of. Might need to check that out and see what that's all about. Echoes reloading chamber says I've run Trigicon HD sites with real good luck with them as well as true glow with the tritium and fiber optics. So they glow in daylight as well as night. Yeah. I think the true glow in my opinion is, would be a good investment. Um, I know my stepdad's never had problems with them. He's got them on three different pistols and he shoots them on a regular basis. I don't think he's ever had any fiber uh, threads come loose out of the mounts. So, uh, hey, hey yeah. Travis, real yeah. quick. I don't, I don't remember who asked, but whoever asked about the SR9, I, I don't know if you saw, but I sent you the link for the exact one. Yeah, I just posted for. that in the comments right now on the chat oh, okay, uh, cool. for the YouTube I'd... side. Yep, there's a link there. If you guys have a Ruger SR9 or any iteration of the SR9, uh, click on that link and that'll take you to the Trigicon option. Is that right? That you purchased? Yeah, it's the one I was talking about. That you don't have to take the rear, the whole rear sight shoe off. So I didn't okay. realize okay. you put that up there. Sorry, man. I just did. No, it's all good. I finally got around to checking out your text message. So we're, we're set. Okay. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about here, revolver sights, guys. You know, you you might be limited uh, with revolvers because, you know, there's tons and tons of size, size, sights out there for m and and oh, blocks. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Before you get to revolvers, have any mm -hmm. of you guys ever used Dawson Precision for sights? No, but we can check it out. Yeah. I know that you're a popular. I know you're a fan of their products. Yeah. He has okay. some really good videos, like especially if you're a 1911 guy, on how he takes some extra steps to change his sights. Hmm. And he comes okay. out with perfect results. He kind of he kind of takes a file and relieves the dovetail just the edge one or two swipes with a file and he does a few tricks that just makes it easy and touch it back up with a blue pen and you're good to go so they're a little bit cheaper than the competition and squib they look they look very well made i mean i know they're, they're american made okay. uh, uh i went in there to get a front sight for my sr 1911 you could specifically look it up by that you know, you don't just you don't have to just type in 1911. So sure, sure. Uh, I I considered uh, I considered maybe uh, getting a matching rear sight for that, but uh, you know, with with the options from Trigicon and True Glow, it's kind of maybe I should just keep Dawson on on the SR 1911, and if I want to change out sights on another uh, handgun, another semi-auto, maybe try out a complete set on something else, but. Uh, yeah, I'm, I've been pretty. I mean, yeah, I just talked about the the, the fiber optic there falling out, uh, but I I, that, I think that really has more to do with me improperly, uh, you know, uh, seating it in there, or or it might just be something that that normally happens. Now I'll tell you this: um, that front fiber optic sight, you've got to let it set in the sunlight for a while to start getting it to glow. But once it glows, for me with with my eyesight, I can pick it up pretty quick I, mm -hmm. I really like that about it the the thing for me is low light if there isn't light coming down over the sights of the firearm i'm having trouble seeing so if it's really cloudy or it's right at sunrise right at sunset you know when you're when the deer are out or whatnot that mm -hmm. I, if i can't see the sights I'm, I'm in trouble the range i shoot at is it's it's a covered range and they've got these boxes that are just like giant suppressors to keep the noise down and all of that makes it hard for me to pick up the sights because it is so dark in there. So if I want to use my, my SR 1911 there, I need to let it set out in the sun and charge up, you know? Uh, but, uh, it, I know, I noticed this, this takes a while to, to get bright. Well, Scrib, one thing I will tell you when, when you go to touch, it, I don't know if you do or not, when you go to replace it, 
some people will be tempted to touch the top of it while they're melting the ends to hold it in place. Even that much will get your um, your fiber optic part of it kind of soft, and it'll, it'll absorb your fingerprint like the uh, the it'll ridges. Bow. It'll bend. It'll bow, but it'll it'll even just a little bit. If you get the ridges, then it won't reflect the light like it mm. should. So some people get ah, tempted okay. and they ruin okay. it that way. All right. Uh, um, some, something to know about fiber optics in Dawson. He, he does something different. Um, in the in the actual metal site itself, the the holes that uh, your fiber optic rod is going to sit in, he countersinks them, counter bores them in there, and it gives it more surface area for those the Do fiber optic to melt to it. No, to melt to it to stay in there tighter. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I don't know of other companies that do that, um, but you'll notice, <laughs> you see how these here, there's a, there's a lot of metal sight to it and it's open on the top. Mm -hmm. Th that's kind of like a, a, what I consider like a strong design. It may limit you to some of the light gathering, but when you get them where they're divided up, where there's two or three, basically little towers holding that up, each one of those, they're cut at a square angle so much. it creates an area where you can get a stress fracture and the metal site just break in half just from recoil. So you look at this as a more of a quality site that there's, there's plenty of metal there to hold it together. Uh, you might want to watch that on cheaper sites. Uh, mm -hmm. There's just not enough metal there over time. And even though you didn't hit it or bang it or anything on a firearm with recoil, a 90 degree sharp edge, that's a place to crack. Um, I know okay. there's some people that talk about just slightly rounding it out with a file and getting more life out of it or whatever, but, um, pretty much Dawson knows what he's doing. He creates a, a, a quality site. He's been doing this forever. Uh, I believe you can send your slide to him and he'll change your sites. Oh, see that, that would be uh, a good option. Cause I had, a, a I used a vice at work. I bought the, the vice blocks. And uh, I did that at work. Uh, you know, I just brought in the slide, not the gun. And uh, uh, I, I might have done a little scratching and nicking. I did the whole little file thing, like they said, and, and whatnot. But I was, I'm not a precision machinist. I'm not. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm a, you know, technician. I'm a mechanic. I'm, I'm not a, so you might go, this is, anybody can do this. Dude, I will, I will scratch or I will bend bump bang whatever so the option to send it in wouldn't for for somebody like me wouldn't be that bad of an option but the thing you're talking about with the the sight flying off that's exactly why i went to these guys for the front sight on my 1911 the front sight literally flew off and i just blamed it on mim you know and i know mim is not as bad it's just we give it we give it more crap than than what it it really deserves but i just blamed it on mim i didn't didn't think about what you were saying there well, and I'll agree with Razor. Razor JB made a comment. You might check it, try a different fiber because mm -hmm. fi fiber optic by nature shouldn't need charging. It's, it's supposed to transfer light instantly. So it's, it, it, it's see, I've had to, I've had to have mine set in the sunlight, just set in the sunlight. Like the first time it it uh, was bright red where I could see it, I had let it set in the bed of the truck for a couple hours, and I I, I I said, wow, this is better than. <laughs> this is the best it's ever looked. So from there on out, I, I let it set. I just let it sit out in the sunlight. Well, mm. if I'm going to the range first thing in the morning, that ain't an option. I've tried to put it underneath the light here at home, and that that makes it glow some. But yeah, well, it, yeah, it, it, it goes off of a light. It purely goes off of a light gathering concept, not a glowing concept. It's amplifying and the light that it's gathering and pushing it out the end. So yeah. it shouldn't take any time to warm up or to harness a glow. It should be. It's almost like it's reflecting the light into the tube, which then pushes it out in the end of the fiber. It's then directing that it's, light out the back. It's yeah. Conditions. I go right yeah. back into a cloudy condition early yeah. in the morning, shooting yep. in the shade or what. But you think it would would? I don't know. It it, it mm -hmm. doesn't. You know, I just figured it was something uh, in it. You know, as far as uh, uh, chemically, it was, or maybe I. I you know, like, like what, uh, defense dad said, maybe I touched it and I didn't even, you know, it subconsciously and I ruined its, its ability to, to amplify just regular ambient light. But, uh, yeah, I was just like, something's wrong with it chemically so, or I don't know. One of the things that's an advantage with the true glows is you're getting, 
you're getting if you get the true glow tritiums, you're getting glass vials mm-hmm. and fiber combined. It's like a glass, it's a fiber style glass tube with tritium in it. And so you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. You're getting that clarity of material that's allowing the light to gather into the tube. Whereas with a traditional fiber site like that, you're just getting it's a plastic or a polymer that's clear that has you know some sort of filament in it to light up. So I mean that might be part of it too, because the ones that I've used have always been really bright. Um it, again, it could just depend on the type of polymer that they use. It could depend on the coating on the outside of the tube, what kind of light gathering you're going to get. It's going to depend on the conditions. You might see the green might light up better than the red. You know, here they've got the ah, red on the front with the green yeah. on the rear. So possibly yeah. do three green instead. Um, well, your your eyes naturally pick up green better than any other color. Depends on the person. Well, I suppose if you're colorblind or if you're blind. But uh, what I'm saying is uh, as far as physiology you know, here we go into anatomy class. Green is the, <laughs> is the uh, color that our eyes are supposed to pick up best out of any color. Yeah, but like if you get those three, if you get that three different colors, just hold them up to the light before you put them in and see which one you pick up on earlier. That's what I did. That's some good advice, too. Now, um, Razor JB says that he is colorblind, so he uses yellow. So I never thought of that. If you're red, my dad's red, green, colorblind. So, you know, you might have to get yourself a different color. You might be looking at a yellow or whatever else is out there. I mean, you know, there could be a market for, you know, for filaments that are not green or red for people that are colorblind. I know it might sound like such a small percentage of people, but that's not the point, you know. I'd like to try a blue fiber optic. Yeah, uh, that would I, be I, Just to try it. That's one, I just want to see what it is. Uh, I actually bought a gun that was supposed to came with you know, the extra fiber ops and one of them was blue. It should have had blue originally installed. You know, it wasn't the main reason I bought it, but I wanted to see it and I didn't get it. Uh, it came with a red one with a extra green one with it. So I'm just looking at True Glow's replacements. They do, they do give you the, uh, okay, so on Cabela's website, they do give you the uh, diameter, but it looks like it's just yellow, green, red, but you can get yellow as an option, which is good, which is really good. So, yeah, you can get True Glow to sell just replacement fibers if you need it just for their sites. So that's also an option. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Dawson Precision, definitely check them out. It looks like they offer a really good value for the money. They're cheaper than True Glow and Trigicon. So that doesn't necessarily no, mean it's inferior quality. But Novax will change your sites also if you send them a slide. Okay. And, okay. and it's fairly it's fairly reasonable. I, I couldn't say offhand, but I think it's somewhere from like 35 to maybe $60 or something. So Razor JB says, I know a lot of guys that use blue as well, and I find that it stands out great. So there's an option also. You can find the blue sides, or if you have an option for it, or you can get the filament. Yeah. I've never even um, seen blue ones. No. Metal Guy 52 says, most people pick up, let's see, a quicker sight picture, black and rear, small front fiber sight quicker than a three-dot night sight setup. Either way, I, I think a light, when mounted or not, is essential. Yeah, for low-light situations, I'm never going to draw and shoot on something in pitch black unless it's like attacking me you know you definitely yeah, always uh, want to make sure you identify your target when we're talking night sights we're not just saying oh well these will give you a side picture to shoot in the dark for me it's more of a low light acquisition than anything so that's why i like the night sights yeah i learned that firsthand when i took that nighttime shooting class with flashlights mm-hmm. your your sights just become a silhouette at that point yeah yeah that's all it is and if you can't make them out at all then you're just pretty much shooting into the dark so um, I did just type in revolver sites for revolvers. I just did a Google search and revolver supply company came up. Now I've never ordered from these guys before, but they do offer a lot of different options here. They also sell moon clips, by the way, if you're a revolver person. So they talk about the different pistol or the different revolvers that they offer sites for. And so you've got options out there and these are relatively inexpensive too, if you need to do some replacements. Now you might only have a, you know, you might, depending on what kind of a revolver you have, you may or may not be able to change out the rear sights or the front sights. You might have a machine front blade sight, which you may want to, you know, if you can get yourself an aftermarket rear sight, you could always do that. You could always paint the front sight, depending on what you're doing. If it's a competition situation, you might not uh, have that option, but they seem like a pretty decent company with a lot of different options there. They are out of stock, unfortunately, on some of their products, but uh, they do have some items that are in stock. And here they talk about the difference. Uh, here they give you the, sp- the specifications on the sites themselves depth of depth of the notch width of the notch and so on and here they mention the different smith and wesson models that they carry the sites for now you might get you know like like with your windicator defense dad does that have a removable front side or not 
No, they're no, no front, no rear. They're just molded in. So I, 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 I painted the front sight with that orange uh, bright nail polish. Okay. Okay. So you might not have any options here. Super chat. Sorry, I had to take that from Never Enough Ammo. <laughs> uh, X Adam one threw a super chat out there. Just said super chat. You ever watch uh, Never Enough Ammo's uh, free for all podcast? You, you get excited whenever somebody gives a super chat. You just interrupt whoever's talking with super chat. So uh, X Adam one, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Man, I've almost got enough for a set of paint pens now. This is great. Jason, I might be going to Shields today to go pick some up that with that super chat money. <laughs> I need to definitely try some of those because I've got a few handguns that have just, you know, blacked out. They're just blade sights on the front and they're just not fun to use at the range, especially my Makarov. That's one where I'd love to shoot it more, but I can't stand the tiny thin front blade sight. It's so hard to kind of make it out from the rears. So anyway, yeah. Hey, on those um, Birchwood Casey super bright paint pens. Mm -hmm. uh, they're just like your, you know, your aluminum paint pen. So when you open it, the, the tip is you have to push it down on a well, table. It's like a right, tester's model paint pen. Yeah, like right. paint pen. Yeah, yeah. Before I do all that, it's kind of like a square wide tip. Mm -hmm. I take a pair of scissors and kind of nip off the corners and make a point out of it. That's a good idea. Okay. Before, okay. while it's dry, before yeah. you've ever, you know, brand new out of the box. I just kind of make the tip a little smaller. Well, you're going to uh, get, if you use the, if you use the wide original chisel tip that you get on those markers and you like go straight up a blade side, you might get some seep around the sides and you end up having to clean that off and stuff. So I can see why you'd want a more precise point if you're going to go with those paint markers. Yeah. I just did it just a little bit. Seems yeah. like it helped. Like I said, I'm, I have no fear of filling it in and getting paint on the gun, but you got to realize you, your sights are a pretty small little circle. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, they, they just seem like they have a pretty wide blade on the, you know, the cotton tip or whatever is made out of. Uh, now you got a spring loaded tip on those markers. Like you yeah. said, on a piece of paper, yeah. obviously a surface, you want to make sure you don't get it dirty, but press the tip a couple times. You'll get some of the paint to come out. So if you want to apply it with a toothpick or a barbecue yeah. skewer, yeah, you, you, you shake them up too. real well. You shake yeah. them up real well. Uh, brand new. It might not be just a couple quick pushes. You might have to push it down and hold it 20 seconds. But, mm -hmm. you know, it'll mm -hmm. fill up with color. But yeah, yeah, if anybody I, ever made any models as a kid growing up, you're used to those testers paint markers that you used it, to have, you know. It, yeah. It's thick enough to find like a, a little cardboard box or a package or something that's, you know, got some shiny covering on it and just make you a little puddle. You can, you yeah. can make a puddle pretty easy with it and uh, then use your uh, toothpick if you have to. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Um, Jacob S out there says, yo, at Travis P 11, yo back at you, buddy. Uh, razor JB says overwatch precision started selling blue fibers. Uh, and then I guess we really hadn't talked about it, but do you guys like the blacked out rear with like the red dot on the front or green dot on the front? What do you guys think about that? Do you like the, do you think the blacked out rear is a quicker target acquisition? Have you guys ever fired any weapons with the blacked out rear and then just a dot side on the front? Yeah. Or eliminated like side of the front? You do? I have it on my VP9 long slide. I don't have it on my regular VP9. The, that one has the phosphorescent rear dots, and the sight picture is easier to pick up on the long slide. Yeah. Although I shoot the other one better. Yeah, I always, 90% of my guns all are blacked out rears. Uh, I do, like I said, at the beginning of the show, I do keep a couple with the original three dot sights just so I can use that, practice that keep mm -hmm. that available you know what i mean but uh, i generally if i can't buy a blacked out rear sight i will black out the original sight but then i don't like the looks of just like two black dots because they're still in my vision yeah. so i have a lot of berettas so uh my easiest go-to cheapest way and it ends up being one of my favorite sight pictures is i'll paint the front sight orange and the rear side, I'll get rid of the two dot sights and I'll replace it with an M9. It's what they call the snowman sight, where it's mm -hmm. they, there's no dots been drilled into that sight. It just has the white painted bottom U notch. Okay. And combined okay. with the round dot in the front, you just make a snowman there. You're lined up. It's like a block, well, basically, is what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. I take that sight, which you can get them $5, $10. Oh. I use, and it's a, everything about it's a factory Beretta part. It's the same shape as your other site just doesn't have the two drilled holes in it uh i use that and then i remove the white paint and mm -hmm. i end up with a blacked out factory height works perfect site for like i've, I've bought them like at uh cdnn before mm -hmm. like five dollars 
Oh, that's awesome. Plus, you can afford to screw them up a couple times too if you're experimenting. You didn't mar your hundred fifty dollars set of sites. Yeah, so you know what you're doing. You yeah, know, that's that's great. one good thing about it. Yeah, there, there's aftermarket <laughs> sites for the Beretta that are you know what I mean, but uh, you know you're paying thirty forty bucks and they're mm -hmm. great and everything. But uh, keeping a factory gun, simple, quick, easy procedure. The rear sights on it because I have the a sight tool made for the Beretta. Uh, it's it, it it's a it's a two three minute job at the most, and you end up with a blacked out sight that's a clean blacked out sight. You know, it doesn't have paint on it, mm -hmm. doesn't have two drilled in dots to uh, distract you or anything. Yep. It's a really clean, simple site, and it's it, it's very cheap. Cool, cool. I heard hey. rumors these things. Do you want to build a snowman to himself while he's doing this? <laughs> Do you want to build a Smaggy? <laughs> Smeggy's got the little snowman icon in our gun videos. He's a, these guys been around for a long time. Does a lot of chats and stuff was one of the original gun channels guys. So. Um, some guns you might look at how it's made and try mm -hmm. it out. You might I not say every gun, but you might be able to just flip your sights around backwards and then have a, a blacked out rear sight. True. Sure. It's a possibility if they're just square. You know, it's always a possibility, too. So that'd be one way to test and see what you think about it before you actually buy something. Never thought about that. Uh, we got another super chat from Tim Allen. Uh, Tim Allen, by the way, thank you so much for your support over there on Twitter. He's always promoting and pushing and liking my my tweets. I tweet all these videos out on Twitter. That's all I really do on Twitter is just send out videos and stuff. I don't really comment a whole lot, but uh, Tim Allen's always out there. He's got a super chat that he threw our way. He said, it's mostly jolly that NEA interrupts with the super chat. Yeah. With Jolly being kind of the young guy of the group, he's kind of the prospect of the Gun Channel's panel. He's not quite an, an MC member at this point, but uh, he's been there quite a bit, so he always gets interrupted when he's talking. Anytime NEA gets a Super Chat, he goes, Super Chat! And he interrupts over Jolly, in case you guys are kind of curious what we're talking about. So this is a whole other podcast, a whole other channel, a whole other show that's out there. So thank you. I think I've made enough off the Super Chats now to cover a set of the paint markers, so I'm going to go pick some of those up today. It's definitely going to have to happen. Um... Man, let's see what's out there. Jacob S. says, how have things been going? I haven't been on this chat in quite a while. Well, Jacob, it's good to have you back. I saw you posted a comment on one of my videos a couple of days ago. Thank you so much for the feedback. Um, Razor JB says that Overwatch Precision started selling blue fibers, in case I haven't said that yet. So that's an option. If you want to try the blue fibers out just for something different, you know, your eyes might pick them up. Maybe they'll contrast a little bit better with your sights than yellow or red. You never know, or green for that matter. So that's always an option for you, too. So. Um, so we covered a lot of information in today's episode. We've talked about, you know, the basics of getting those sites off and swapping them, the different tools that we use. You know, if all this just seems really daunting, best thing you can do is watch some videos, read some reviews, maybe talk to some buddies that do some shooting at the range if you've got them. Uh, go check them out in person. You know, you can handle a lot of these sites. Or if you go to like a bigger gun store, they might have sample guns on display that'll have the sites from the factory installed. You can hold the firearm and see what you think before you drop that $150 and that $75 installation fee or that $300 site pusher. So you've got a lot of options out there before you spend all that money on putting the sites on. No, Jason, were you going to say something? I'm sorry. I saw you unmuted. So, Oh, there we go. There we oh, go. I was oh, just, oh, oh, there we go. I was <laughs> just going to show you, this is at Midway USA. Mm -hmm. There you go. I think I can get those locally here at Shields for probably the same price. We'll check and see how much they're going for, but uh, well, with Midway, I have to pay shipping too, possibly. But uh, so that's 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 what the tip looks like out of the package. That's untrimmed, right? Yeah, that's what you get. Okay, okay, sort of. That's just I wouldn't say how perfectly accurate it is. It's yeah. just an ad, but uh, yeah, I just kind of cool. took a little bit off there, little scissors, little snip, mm. snip, made it a little smaller. Sweet, cool. So, man, we covered a lot of information today. Uh, when it comes down to brands, I think you can confidently purchase um, Trigicon or True Glow or Novak because I have pistols that have come with factory Novak sites before, and they're very high quality. Um, Dawson Precision. Who are we forgetting? Jason, who else did we not mention? Is that it? Just those four companies today? Or do we? Lakeline LLC. Lakeline sells. They are one of the original kind of Taurus G series part suppliers, making a lot of aftermarket parts for the uh, the Taurus G series, like. PT-111 G2, G2C, G3C, G3, Toro models. Go to Lake Lion LLC yeah. if you want to get some good access to Taurus accessories. And they make stuff for other companies, too. But Ameriglo. Also, yeah. Oh, Ameriglo? Ameriglo? For the cheaper ones, Galloway Precision makes some, I think, mm -hmm. too. 
Oh, they do. I didn't know that. I thought Galloway just did recoil springs and guide rods. Well, that, you may be right. I thought they did, but I could. They, be they may. They may make. I mean, they machine, so they might just make their own sights and paint them. You know, they're a metal machining company, so yeah. William Williams gun sights are pretty affordable sights. We've also got millet. M i l l e t t. Okay, so hopefully, you guys are taking notes if you're looking for them. So there's a lot yeah. of different options for you here. Yep. Williams is up here in Michigan. They've got their fire site, which is is their their fiber optic, I believe. Excellent. I've got a Williams uh, rear aperture site on a rifle, and it's uh, it's kind of nice. Cool. There's another option for you. Um, somebody had made a comment that uh, Rick's life, Rick's life as I see it, is another awesome podcast. I recommend you guys check out. Um, Jacob S says I think Rick at Rick's Life talked about this as well past Wednesday, last Wednesday. So did they talk about sites last Wednesday? I didn't get a chance to watch this episode. Um, no, we were more on uh, red dots and uh, uh, okay. Rick's um, Rick has to shoot left handed, mm -hmm. but he's still right eye dominant. No, oh, so okay. he's he's having trouble, uh, and just the way his uh, physical condition is, uh, he 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 just can't do right handed. He's like a left handed yeah. person, so he's trying to shoot a rifle left handed but still be right eye dominant and he's just not as uh, maneuverable as you know to say. So he's, he's having struggle and see working the red dot and, and holding a rifle. That's what we mm -hmm. were talking about. So metal guy, eight fifty two has the ultimate budget suggestion. I mean, it might be a bit immoral, but Hey, evil is what you make of it. Right. Uh, metal guy, eight fifty two says you could purchase the side pusher from Amazon. And when you're done, just return it as defective. So UPS picks it up at your house. Not that I've ever done that. <laughs> yeah um if it, you know if it's some crappy foreign site pusher uh, i'm not gonna lose any sleep over it i've seen some some high dollar uh american made site pushers you know i considered getting one and putting it in with my my gunsmithing tools i already told you guys i'm i'm liable to scratch it up or do this or do that uh but <laughs> you know i'm glad that jason mentioned the the option to to send in your slide and have them do it because if you think about it even with shipping and everything it's still cheaper than a site pusher if you're just doing it once you're you're not really out any money uh, if, if you're going to, if you plan to do multiples, you might want to invest in a decent site pusher. Mm -hmm. I think echo was, was talking about that out in the chat yeah. as far as that, or just sharing it with friends. And uh, that's one of the nice things, uh, uh about our, our group is, uh, we, you could simply say, Hey man, could you mail me your site pusher for like a week? <laughs> Pretty much. We've done that where you help each other yeah. out on stuff. Yeah. Like that. And, and sending a slide in to, to a gunsmith, um, uh, it's not like the firearm. Uh, it's pretty cheap shipping. You don't have to go through any of that FFL stuff or yeah. whatever. It can go from your door and back to your door mm -hmm. uh, when it's just the slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found a company down in Florida I considered sending my uh, slide to, and, and uh, I wanted to have front serrations cut in it to match the rear. And and then I thought, you know, uh, they've got a couple other things here. I could have them uh, maybe tune it up a little bit or uh, replace the sights completely. You know the sights on on my SR nineteen eleven are not bad. They're yeah, they're, they're not nice. Exactly, they're, the, they're not the factory my white dots or whatever. The the three dots that they have. Yeah, they're not Novax. my favorite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're not my favorite, but they they work. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I I was able to. They're a bit thick. Yeah, I, I've I've been able to to make some decent shots with that gun, and uh, I, I'm I'm happy with it out of the box. But it's something where. I'm okay with, with sinking some money in that because sites are you know, some, unless you're visually impaired, sites are more than just a fad They're uh, You know, uh, they, it can be the difference between putting rounds on target and not, I've, I've had, you know, a handgun or a rifle where the sites just don't appeal to me and I'm not doing so well with it. And then I'll have another one where the sites for me, they're just something about them is different. I like Glock sites to tell you the truth. I really do Glock factory sites. I, I'm not, you know, fond of, of the feel of the gun, the, uh, any of that, but I, I do like their, their factory sites. So mm -hmm. there's I, maybe for other people, they don't look at it the same way when they're getting their sight picture there. They don't, you know, uh, you, you pick up a gun for the first time and you, you go, these sites suck. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one you've never handled. And you're like, wow, man, I'll take it just for the sights. <laughs> you know, uh, they, maybe that's just my experience and nobody else has had something like that. But I, I will say it makes a big difference. That's why like in these movies where you see, the hero picks up the bad guy's gun and shoots with it like he's been carrying it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like that, that ain't the way it really works, <laughs> yeah. man. 
Um, Patriot of the Dark has a good suggestion. I don't know if I can really contribute to this because to be honest with you, I don't have a lot of pistols, to be honest with you, with a lot of different types of sites. But Patriot of the Dark says, uh, please make a review of random sites and their site picture with orientation. It could be very helpful. Some of these I've never seen before. So, yeah, that's the, is that, which which 1911 is that? Is that a Kimber? That's a Ruger SR 1911. That's an SR 1911. I've got the exact same gun. I just didn't I recognize can, the grips. Yeah. If I can get it flipped up here, um, I'll show you the sights on it. Um, just a second. Let me try that. Yeah, it has. And, you know, beginning, beginning shooters, I've noticed they really like generous dot are, sights, you know? Yeah. These are the replacement for the factory Novaks. Well, if I can get there. Yeah, right and there. And they're black, right okay? And then the front sight oh, okay. is painted orange. Okay, okay, gotcha. That is now the my... factory sight, and these are $30 rear sights from Ruger. They're made by Novak. Hmm. Uh, point of aim, point of impact. Yeah, and, and it's and, hard to see. it's really hard to see, but I mean, the the picture doesn't do it justice. That orange dot is there, boy. I mean, it is there. Yeah. So. My understanding is that the the sights are shaped like that to make it where it doesn't snag when you draw it. Yeah, they've got an angle on the rear, like an end yeah, of an angle yeah. cut. There's still a little bit of a ledge if you need it, but it goes up a little and then back. Yeah, that's the idea. Or reholstering and won't get caught on anything. It just now, kind of flips up, slides over it. Yeah. Compared to GI sights on a 1911, yes. night and day, literally oh, night yeah. and day. The, the GI sights are just a just a 90 degree blade, right? They're just a blade that goes across the back with a U notch cut out of it, and then the front sight's just a blade sight machined into the slide. And when I was 19, sights like that didn't bother me, but now, yeah, I have trouble distinguishing, especially depending on the kind of target you're using too. Which, you know, it's like man, you buy like a, a big target, but if it doesn't contrast not that it matters because if you use it in a self-defense situation who knows what color combination you're going to be going up against but just for range use it just makes it not so fun that was one of the reasons why i got rid of my um rock island armory gi 1911 was i just didn't like the i didn't like the factory sites that came on it and i probably could have painted the front site and been able to see better with it but after i got the sr 1911 you know on quite a few recommendations from you squib and kingpin um i love the three dot sites that come on it and Beginning shooters, they really like those because they're generous. They're easy to pick up. They do block a lot of the target, but they also make it easy to for that new shooter to be able to kind of line up those three dots and get it level. So that's always you know, that's yeah. When you're younger, your eyesight's a lot better, and when you're serving oh, yeah. in the military, you're typically younger. Typically, mm -hmm. we do make modifications out in the field that when we get <clears> back <throat> to to the to base, we have to get rid of whether it just be putting some nose art on the aircraft or whatever it is. I don't ever recall anybody ever painting the front sight on any firearm we had. I mean, because you could just use some nail polish or something like that and, and remove it with some acetone. So it's not like you're going to get busted for, for, for damaging government property or something like that. But I don't ever remember seeing anybody make any modifications like that. To And maybe it's just because we all had really good eyesight back then. But if I was given the option to put my own sights on on my duty weapon uh i wonder what i would have done back then i probably would have asked for uh trigicons because mm -hmm. they they were they were the thing they were they you know the the three dot green you know kind of but it's it just sights really matter i guess when you get older so maybe a mm -hmm. younger person listening to this or watching this is going what's the big deal uh you just you never know when your eyes are going to start going i can't stand this getting older crap Oh yeah, when it's I was the, younger, the yeah. color contrast. Yeah. It's easier to distinguish for us color, you know, the yeah. contrast and yeah, go ahead guys. I was just gonna say when I was younger, 25, 50, 100 yards, no problems on on just black on black iron sights, but yeah, I'm I'm old now. <laughs> we're all we're old old man chat, grumpy old man chat is what we should be well, calling I mean, this the, morning. The but it's true. We're, it's true. We're, yeah. we're wiser, we make better choices usually. We make better choices <laughs> yeah. and you know, we've got that experience to make up for, uh, you know, things like the eyesight going. But, yeah, it's just it's really kind of irritating when I'm like, I used to be able to read six font in low light on, you know, oh. gray paper. And now and that ain't just that ain't happening. I got to pull stuff away like a foot to read like a water bottle. This is really pissing me off. It's like oh, yeah. I used to be able to hold stuff up. Now it's not in focus. This is okay. not in focus. Until two years this ago. I got new, yeah. Two, until two years ago when I when I <laughs> got new glasses. 
they were trying to talk me into bifocals, and I was like, I don't need a damn bifocal. I am fighting them at my optometrist right now. They're like, we're running out of formulas for you to see, Travis. I'm like, I don't care. I don't want bifocals. They're like, they're no line. It's like, no. <laughs> Travis, that Olight you sent me, I've used it at the grocery store to read labels. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're like looking at the back of seriously that's what i look like that's what it, pe- people how, are like what is he doing how much sugar's in this pudding cup not not to mention as bright <laughs> as that is even with you know regular lights in the store and whatnot yeah. it's like it really draws attention and all i'm trying to read is is it made in america or not oh yeah i'm sitting at work and i'm holding up contracts and I'm like full arms length trying to read the fine print like trying to read it to my customers <laughs> here's a bad one i got my sample contacts from the optometrist and i put them on and I go, dude, I called up my Thomas. I go, I can't read anything within like two feet of the front of my face. He's like, well, yeah, you got to put some reading glasses on. But no, that's not why you get contacts. You don't get contacts. You got to wear reading glasses. I want to read up close and far away. He's like, Travis, you're getting old now. That's not going to happen. So anyway, this is fueling why we do the, these site swaps. Really, it does, because it just the visibility and the accessibility is as you get older, you guys are going to start seeing that. So invest and, now and get it done now so you have to spend the money later on in life, right? You can justify the cost of a really yep. good set of sights or gunsmithing yep. or whatever it is or yep. trying out one set and going, nope, don't like these and trying out another. And, you know, you can at this – when I was younger, I couldn't – in my head, I couldn't wrap my, wrap my head around it. But at, at this age, I can justify it. Well, a prime example, like my logo. You see that Ruger Mark One. That's the first gun I ever shot. And like I said, I could pick off stuff at 50 yards with that thing. Which and But if I hadn't painted the front sight last year, I can't hit squat with that thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we do have a question out there. Let's get this answered, guys. Uh, gun Loving Grandpa says, what's a good sight for a home defense shotgun? You know, with a shotgun at 10, 15 feet, it wouldn't really matter. But if you need something, take off that front brass bead and get yourself... I would say get a tritium fiber front sight because it's going to glow in the dark. It's going to glow in low light. It's going to gather light when it's bright. I would say go beyond fiber. I'd get a tritium front sight for a shotgun. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'll tell you what I did for mine is I, and there was a question to answer earlier. I answered it about high vis. So high vis makes a snap on sight that has a groove that fits in around your brass sight. So you can retain both. I put that on and I put a little bit of red Loctite underneath it to hold it. And I fired that out the range. It doesn't come off and the visibility is great on that thing. Do you have a video on that site? Have you done one on it? uh, It's just in the overview of my, on the old crappy video I did with it, but it it just literally snaps over the barrel, but you do want to put something to hear it. But I've shot it several times and it stays put and the visibility is awesome. And that site was like 11, 12, under $15. You said high is the company that makes it. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, front aftermarket sites for shotguns. If you go to a sporting goods store or a gun store, you're going to have a lot of options. I would get whatever's going to be brightest, and that's just because in your home, depending on how you have your house set up and your lighting situation, you might be operating in a low light condition. So you're going to need to be able to, first of all, distinguish your target, and second, be able to make out that front side on your target. And maybe you've got a bit of an acreage to defend or a farmstead or something where you need to be able to reach out beyond 15 or 20 yards with your shotgun, which you can do. I don't care what anybody says depending on the load that you're shooting. Um, But definitely get something that's going to offer some color on the front because yeah, front bead sites are, I can, I could use them like a, like a, like a boss when I was a kid. And now I just, now I'll shoot blue rock and stuff, play pigeons and stuff like that and and skeet. And it's just the front bead side is really hard for me to distinguish from the front. So I'm almost contemplating going with like a green side for my, for my skeet shooting. Well, I've tested that thing at night with the lights off and I have a light mounted on that gun. So that fiber optic picks up the ambient light, even though oh, it illuminates. Gets, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I never thought about that. Um, <laughs> Pink Panther says my eye doctor mentioned trifocals. I said, hell no. <laughs> bifocals were bad enough. They make trifocals. I'm really fearing. I'm really fearing old age guys. I'm hoping Trifold. they invent something that I can just drop over my eyeball. That'll give me 2020 back. So. Oh man. William Car- Keller says for a shotgun, I like the excess big dot night sight. Yeah, I mean, it's going to cover up a lot of your sight picture, but that's okay because with a shotgun, it's going to be you know, a two-legged target that you're going to have to worry about anyway if you have to use it for self-defense. Not that we want to see that, but uh, M. Gabriel says, Squib is right. I can't see squat. <laughs> M. Gabriel, how old are you? I thought you are just like some dude rocking his 20s right now. You, see, you, you seem like such a young chipper person in the comments you leave on my videos. So 
Uh, some people see different colors better. Check out which color stands out best to you. Yeah, if you can, you can definitely get out there. Like I said, handle some firearms. Go to a gun store that's got a lot of guns in stock and say, yeah, I'm looking for a gun that's got this kind of side on it. And then you can hold it and see what you think about it. Like, oh, I like these. I like these pick up light well or these these look well. And then you can go buy those sites when you go home or buy that gun with those sites on it. Do that too and support the gun store. So that's one way to avoid dropping 150 plus 75 for install and not being happy in the end. So that's definitely an option for you too. Um, oh, Night Strike, Night Strike, come on. He goes, he's going to have to rename himself Travis P. Bifocals instead of Travis P. 11. <laughs> that's going to be my, that'll be my C channel when I get really old. I'll start testing out like products for senior citizens, you know? Like uh, preparation H and uh, that stuff that keeps your dentures in. Does that uh, mean if I get you older, I'm going to change my name to Defunct Dad? Defunct Dad. <laughs> Today on Defunct Dad, we're going to fix the bent shaft on your side pusher. <laughs> uh huh. We know where you're going with that one, Defense Dad. Funny yeah, enough, but... the side pusher needs a blue pill, too. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and that's why we've got a tube of Loctite. <laughs> Uh, what else we got here? Sam of Anarchy says, anybody else use a Winchester 1894 3030 for home defense or hunting? I think we need to have a home defense chat next week. We do that like every year. We talk about the basics of securing your home, some of the basic ideas, especially last year was a bigger idea with a lot of the social unrest going on. We had covered that as a topic, you know, talking about alarm systems and basics for keeping yourself safe and choices for home defense firearms. Let's do a chat on that next week. Let's go home defense 101 version 3.0. Times change, things change, new ideas come out. So it's always good to kind of update that idea, you know, and remind people what they should be doing if they need to defend themselves at home. Uh, 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 yeah, I have some Winchester 94s and um, I don't use them for home defense. But if uh, you try to go mess with my Winchesters, you better defend yourself. <laughs> yeah, I, I have nothing against using a 3030 for home defense. I find it a very mobile, compact package for the most part. You know, you can get one with, what, a 16-inch barrel on it. Maybe get a 44 mag squid. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that'd be a wonderful home defense carbine if you don't want to mess with an AR. I mean, no nothing against yep. any of those choices, but I would be. I mean, hey, man, our forefathers defended themselves with a 3030 for 100 years. So I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't worry about um, being worried about having one. So um, That's my favorite rifle, man. <laughs> right on, man. Right on. So... Pink Panther says you got to be careful because LASIK surgery can screw up your eye dominance and mess up your aim. Oh, I've been told I'd be a, I'd be a friggin they'd love to do LASIK on me. I've, I've been told by my optometrist, like, you ever want to do that? You know, they probably make a graduate study out of your eyeballs. I'm like, thanks, bro. I appreciate hearing that. You know, he's like, what Man, your eyes are messed up. <laughs> I love it when an optometrist tells you that. What's that? It'll, it'll make your, your eyesight better like it was when you were younger, but eventually your eyes will whatever change their shape and you'll go right yeah. back to having crappy vision again it could buy you five years ten years you just don't know that's all i need to make more range tests that's all i need yeah, <laughs> yeah. hey i don't shoot low to the left anymore shoot high into the right yeah <laughs> you know and and that's something i've noticed too is if i can see the target i can usually hit the target when i'm missing it's because i can't see it when i put that optic on my henry it's the only optic i own right the first time i ever really, really had a scope. I've, I've shot with scopes a few times, but very little, very little trigger time with scope. The scope made a world of difference. So mm -hmm. it's the same thing with the sights. Mm -hmm. If I, if those sights can help me line up, if I can pick up the sights and see the target, I'm in good shape. Yeah. I didn't want to do, but I finally broke down and put a really nice uh, optic on my, my 30, 30. Cause I thought if I'm going to use this thing for deer and I want to go past a hundred yards, I'm not going to use the partial buckhorn sites or whatever they call it that henry uses i said i'm just gonna put a good scope on it i don't care yeah you're setting up you know freezing your butt off all day you see one deer you've got one shot yep. Yep. and because you didn't invest in a scope it, your, your freezer's not full and again i don't want to be fuddy here but i think it's important to make a humane shot a humane kill to drop that animal as quickly as possible so that's just my thought on it so why not be able to see clearly where your shot's gonna go you know that's just my opinion about it so i still like um, those buckhorn sites though I just suck with them. I guess part of it is just trying to use a round target with them. I can't tell what I'm really shooting at at 25 yards. Maybe I need to stretch it out a little bit and go with a larger, like a silhouette target or a deer target or something. I don't well, know. Well, yours are weird compared to mine. I like, uh, yeah, I like they mine use a better. semi semi buckhorn is what Henry uses. Yeah, the 336 buckhorns are fine. Those are great. But the Henry ones, you just got to get used to them, you know? Yeah, I like yeah. the, I like, well, shooting a lever action rifle is just like a, 
an enjoyable day in itself. You know what I mean? I like the buckhorn sights. It's how the rifle is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's something about it. I mean, you're looking down at, you know, we may call it a short gun, but when you're aiming, you're looking down a lot of long barrel, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yep. And, and, and when you're hitting pop cans or whatever, you know, with it 50 yards away, you know, it, it's just fun. It's nice. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? They're accurate. You know what I mean? You're looking down a very long barrel and when you're hitting what you're shooting at and, you know, using your lever to cycle it, you know, mm -hmm. there's just something fun about that whole day. I, I, it, yeah, Trav it, I haven't had any 30, 30 ammo I could afford to enjoy myself with for a year or so, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, a lever gun, T take a lever gun and a revolver out to the range one day, you know, and, and just have fun. It's a refreshing experience is what it is. Come yeah, to Nebraska. You? Travis and I have plenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. We were buying it up at Walmart before they sold out. We were snagging. We'd call each other up. Hey, Walmart's got more core locked in stock. Go buy it. We're paying oh, like 1350 a box for it. We were buying hundreds oh, of rounds. 30, 30. Haven't, still haven't. We got plenty of ammo that's came back in the last yeah. three weeks, but uh, still no 30, 30. I uh, saw one box of 243 or 270. And that was the first box I've seen on the shelves in a year. So it's going to slowly start to trickle back, but it's been pretty thin for 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 what I consider a popular Nebraska hunting caliber, 243, 270. Um, 308's now starting to come back in stock with some different flavors of of, of rounds, different pills. Um, but it's been it's been it's been thin. It's been thin. I was kind of we did a you know we did a podcast on this like six months ago. You know how's the ammo shortage going to affect hunters? Because it's not a big deal, but if you got to pay ninety dollars for a box of of hunting grade 308 because you only had one box before and you've used it all. And you don't reload, you know, that was actually one of the things that got me to reload 308 was the lack of 308 ammo on the shelves. But um, that was, a, yeah, that was a topic. Jason, question for you real quick, and then we got to go ahead and wrap up. Um, question for you from Santa of Anarchy 92 is what year are your Winchester 1894s? Uh, I got a 1974 and I got a 1994 100 year anniversary oh, wow. Ranger. Okay, okay. Ooh, 1994. That was a good year. That was a good year. All right. So we are going to go ahead and wrap it up. Let's let the panel go ahead and put their final plugs in. And then we will give a little shout out to people on the YouTube side. Guys, don't forget to click that link to watch my video on the 45 ACP giveaway we're going to do. We'll give that away in about a week or two. I want to let some more entries come in. I've got quite a few, but I want more. And then uh, Defense Dad and I are going to do that drawing live. And uh, we'll get a hold of you about getting that 1911. So all right, um, Squib Lift, we'll go ahead and start off with you. Any final plugs before we go? Might run off for another cup of coffee. All right, Squib Lift, we'll come back to you in a second here. Uh, Jason, anything you want to say before we go? Uh, good to talk to y'all. Nice topic. Great show. Thanks for the invite. I'll just add in on the, if you're going to change your sights, it's something new on your pistol and if you can shoot it better that means you're going to shoot it more often so exactly. you know you can bring breed new life into an old forgotten pistol that you have just by uh you know revisiting it try some new sites to change it up even just simply paint them and uh you know maybe uh you'll get back to a pistol that you've uh let get forgotten that's true. And uh, the sad part is it's actually a shooter for me. It's actually cheaper for me to shoot my Makarov right now than it is for me to shoot my nine millimeter. If I got to buy a new manufacturer ammo, <laughs> Makarov ammo is cheaper than, than nine by 19, which is kind of crazy, but, uh, but that's a good idea. And I'm definitely going to paint the front side on the Makarov so I can get out there and shoot it more because it's fun to shoot, but I just hate that front blade side so much. I just don't do more than a, a box every now and then of, of ammo through it. So cool, man. All right. Defense dad, anything you would say before we go? Oh, thanks for having me. A fun discussion. Uh, yeah. I, put, I put out a video last night if anybody wants to go watch it. Um, if anybody's in or around the Omaha and Bellevue area tomorrow, uh, stop out at the diversity shoot and it should be a lot of fun. I'll be, I'll be volunteering there all day long with John from Sand Hill Shooter. And I actually shot with a couple of the RSOs that are going to be there last night, and they're pretty cool people. So it should be a good time. That's going to be at Athena Arms in Papillion. Is it in Papillion? Yeah, from Athena from, Arms. From, yep, okay. from Athena Arms from ten to six. Bunch of free activities, and if anybody out there is new to guns, you can pay twenty dollars, take a basic pistol class, and it includes the ammo. Dude, that's awesome. That's a that's a bargain right there. Man, just yeah. sneak in and pretend you don't know anything. I'll just take this hat off and go put on like a like a decal seed hat or something, and roll yeah. up and be like, "Hey, I just got this." 1911 and i don't know how to use it aren't you trying to p11 no 
you'll, you'll get to meet Tony Simon. And yeah. if you want to, if you want to meet me, I don't charge for autographs because nobody wants mine anyways. <laughs> That's all right, man. That's right. You're getting there, buddy. You're getting there. Autograph merch <laughs> is coming soon. Defensedad.com. There we go. Uh, so uh, Sand Hills, or not Sand Hills, geez. Single shot. Anything you want to say before we go? Oh, not too much. I've got a Ruger SP-101. It's got that green fiber optic sight, the front sight. Mm. That's nice. That comes standard with the uh, from the factory uh, oh, nice. with that. Cool. So that's pretty nice easy to pick up yep. uh, other than that uh, I'm going to try to get some videos out I know I've said that a few times before but <laughs> hey, hey man we get busy in life we get busy sometimes you know yeah I've got yeah. a lot of stuff going on too so uh, just bear with me swing by the channel when you get a chance check it out sounds good man and, right on uh, so that's single space shot exclamation point weekend. right now I'm so yeah Sorry about that, man. I, I you had a right. gap there, and you're speaking, so I was going to let everybody know about uh, right your channel. Now I'm stuck in bucket, bumper to bumper traffic here in Massachusetts. Oh, you're surrounded by. I'm not going to uh, say it. So, uh, <laughs> with that, everybody, be safe. Take care. God bless. <laughs> America moves by truck. We'll catch you, folks. It Let's certainly see. does, man. Thank you so much for what you do. Uh, cool, cool. Yeah. All right, and uh, Squib Lift. Any final plugs you want to get in there before we go? Uh, good timing. I stepped away to shoot the end of uh, another coffee review. Uh, it's going to be like a seven minute video where you go. I wasted seven minutes of my life because I really don't say a whole lot. <laughs> I, I do, but I don't. Uh, the coffee speaks for itself, Squib. The coffee well, speaks I've for done itself. two coffees in a row now that I haven't edited them. I mean, I just got done shooting this one, but there, there's nothing spectacular about them. Uh, so maybe the video will just say, all right, I'm not going to spend any money on them, uh, but they're not bad coffee. You know, I mean, I'm sure you've shot some reviews where you kind of the the maybe the packaging or or the 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 flavor that they advertise or something. You're like, oh, this could be pretty good, and then you're like, no, it's just coffee. I don't, you know. Mm -hmm. But but um, I haven't really done a whole lot of uh, firearm related uh, videos uh, on my A channel. On this channel, on on one of my B channels here, I've been working on some just some videos about little things that I do around the factory as far as uh, minor repairs to the machines, how they work, why they, you know, some of the silly things you got to do to fool the machine to get to work or uh, <laughs> stuff like that. But uh, just, uh, just dabbling around with the channels. I, I really do need to get out to the range and I, I can't stand dragging the camera out to the range, but I do need to do some, uh, some firearm related videos. I just, um, I think I've only got one sitting in the studio. I just not, not really, not really feeling it. I've just been doing other stuff. Uh, I, I might be doing, I might shoot a, uh, this weekend, a, a, a cocktail video with some vodka. Uh, but overall, just in my spare time when I'm doing this, whether I'm jumping on live shows, which by the way, thanks for the invite. Yeah. No problem, uh, uh, or, or shooting the videos for any of my channels. Uh, I, I'm having fun and I'm learning. I, I learned a few things today. Got some uh, good tips from you guys. Uh, appreciate that. And I uh, hope some other people got something something out of this or, or some of the other, you know, the videos and live shows that we all do. Well, you know, we like to help a lot of people spend a lot of money that's not ours. That's what we do best. So Yeah, you guys definitely, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I'm good because I just put it on the credit card, right? But, uh, yeah, you guys are yeah. definitely, you're really helping out MasterCard and Visa is what you're doing. Dude, I'll tell you right now, some some poor guy saying, honey, I need a site pusher and I need some sites and I need some, oh, man. All right. Hey, all hey right. man, I used my Discover last night. Squib should be proud of me. Uh, there you go. You know, we don't have one of those in the repertoire, but uh, the wife did get a Bass Pro Shop MasterCard last weekend. And uh, Ooh. yeah, I got I got a Shields Visa and I'll tell you what, I don't want to admit this, but I get a gift card from them about every three months, two months. And it takes quite a few points to make that happen. But. Yeah, but see, th those sorts of things, people don't understand that sometimes you've, you've got that sort of thing going uh, with some sort of rewards program. Of course, the rewards programs are there to suck you in to get you to spend money. Yeah. But if you bank that and you're having a month oh, where you've got yeah. a lot of bills or unexpected, and but you want to buy a toy, it's like, well, I've got all this, all these points. Well, I just use it to buy the expensive item and then I just pay it off as soon as it shows up on my invoice online, but then I benefit no. and get the points from it. It's like I bought in a bike. I just bought an upper the other day. I, um, when I bought that 
my 80% lower kit, that was almost $600. I mean, don't, it doesn't take long to rack that stuff up. Don't so. forget about shields, too. If you spend over $500, you get a free item on the way out the door. Free hat, free thermos. Yeah, uh, lots yeah, of free you get, stuff from there. Yeah, you just, you just go down and say, I spent $500. I get something free. What do you want? Take anything from the prize board. You know, you feel like yeah. a little kid getting those tickets you could trade in when you're a little kid, like a ski ball ticket or something, you know? I it's got quite cool. a few hats and coolers, and then I just pay the credit card off about five days later cool 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 oh i got family that's informing me that they're on their way over so uh all right we're gonna go and wrap it up this has been episode number where are we at 196 we'll come back next week and talk about home defense 101 again what do we do have we changed anything has our philosophy changed are we doing anything different in the era of social unrest or are we just living our lives like we normally do that'll be another discussion for just a little bit later on uh, a little shout out to Squibload, who's over there and over here uh y and h is out there gizzard gary thanks for the promo buddy ozzy Orsborn, m gabriel tacos and french fries jason stewart over there and over here pink panther 69 in the house gun love and grandpa with us sam of anarchy 92 x adam one jacob s watching today also uh who else is out there tim allen watching night strike one was with us this morning probably still listening in the background there uh let's see metal gun guy 852 is in the house william keller's with us uh, Patriot in the dark, man, a lot of the usual suspects, but some good, good new viewers today. Blue steel 84 is out there. Sorry. Blue steel, uh, 44 is out there also, uh, rolling trip watch and razor JB giving some great advice. Echoes reloading chamber. Great to talk to you. Echo. Thank you very much. Super chatters. Thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it. X Adam ones in the house and, uh, and Gabriel watching too. So, oh, mystic mystic guns was out there too. Hello, mystic. Sorry if I didn't recognize you earlier. I knew you were out there. So. All right, guys, we're going to go and end it. So uh, in the meantime, I want you guys to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, Alicia. Bye, Alicia. Hey, Alicia, can I borrow your side pusher?